early Argon stream? Is this real life? This, this is actually the normal time for a stream on Thursday and Friday, but, uh... Yeah, we like to split the difference. Do late streams half half the week, early streams the other half, you know? Make as many people happy or alternatively uh, unhappy as possible. <laughs> it kind of goes both ways sometimes. How's everybody doing today? Long time no see. I just streamed 14 hours ago or so, and we're back at it again. Welcome, welcome to uh, the Stardew Valley Challenge that has taken longer than... 15 of those 10 hour compilations on YouTube, you know the ones where it's like 10 hours of silence, but you in, like the vine boom sound effect is inserted intermittently throughout, something like that. You could watch 15 of those, or the same one 15 times, or you could do this price perfection challenge. Little nutty. Good to see everyone here, good to see everyone doing well. Opinions on today's copy pasta? Uh, I hadn't seen that one before, Snatcher. It was it was some someone besmirching Abigail in favor of Haley, and you know what? I mean, we all know my stance on Haley, but I do like Abigail too. So she's it's I'm conflicted on that one. <laughs> Halfway through a seven hour car trip, so you can help me get through the last half. I got you, Dark Sa Dark, uh, Dark Slayer. I got you, man. It's not a great start if I'm already tripping on my words. Literally, like two minutes into the stream. But the show must go on, and before it does, we of course have some fan art to go over. I wasn't expecting any because, like, it's it was such a short turnover period between uh, streams. But uh, fan favorite, artist of the emotes that uh, that channel members have, Aru's B, came through in the clutch with this amazing piece right here. This Haley and Chloe picnic. Absolutely just, like, blew my socks off with this one it's, it's so it's so cute it's so beautiful it's honestly it reminds me of like some puzzles that i've done like some like jigsaw puzzle type things it's got that same sort of air about it i don't know what this is or i mean i know what this is obviously but it's i don't know what that feeling is really really cool i do see there it seems to be some sort of red and green uh salad of some sort near chloe's knees over there you can't just drop red and green around these parts without uh, evoking some strong, strong feelings. You all know what I'm talking about, so uh, <laughs> make of that what you will. But thank you to Arus for another a lovely piece of fan art. And thank you to all the other fan artists who have submitted fan art over these past few months as well. If you'd like to share your own fan art, exclamation point Discord, there's a channel over there to share it. You can also tweet it at me, at ArgonMatrix or share it with me via DM. Let me know how you want to be credited. It's all good. Greatly, greatly appreciate it, as always. Cactus fruit salad. Speaking of cactus fruit, currently 82% belief. It's dropped a little bit from last stream. I understand we, it's a little bit of wind has been taken out of our sails after the events of the previous stream. Maybe the previous two streams, even. We've gotten, like, what, three different desert fish? Well, not three different. We got, like, two sandfish and then the scorpion carp over the course of two streams. It's kind of nuts. But maybe that just means we're ramping up to something big here. We've gotten, I believe it was mentioned in the Discord, a total of eight different desert items from the trash cans, none of which have been the cactus fruit. Either coconut, sandfish, or scorpion carp. So I don't know if the odds are any different for all those. I feel I'm pretty sure they're all the same. But, uh, <laughs> my anecdotal evidence leads me to believe otherwise. Am I real? I mean, you're here, All-Star Gaming, so I have to assume so. Unless you're a bot, which is always a, always a possibility in these parts. Alright, let me go ahead and I gotta meet this other music over here. I do like the song, but... Ooh, I do like this. I forgot we swapped out Pickle Jar Rag last time. I might have to switch it back, because I am, uh... It's hard to wean off of something that you're addicted to, you know? And Pickle Jar Rag is my drug of choice. Stream number 50, gotta be special. I mean, you said it, you said it. We're gonna go ahead and uh, end the poll there. 83% of believers in chat right now, which means that 17% of people are on the wrong side of history because we're getting the cactus fruit today. You don't, you don't wanna be on the wrong side of history, that's all I'm saying, because it's like, it's such a cool phrase. On being on the right side or wrong side of history, it, make, it just makes you feel that much more impactful. 
make sure the farm is cute. I hope we're doing doing you justice there, Haley. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna adjust my microphone. I feel like it's in a weird spot right now. Give me one second. Okay, I don't know if that's any better or worse or any different at all, but it is, uh, I did change it, so. I did, I did move it around. Let me get things ready here. Non-believers want fanfic. I did sort of give that incentive now, exclamation point bet, that um, people who want that fanfic and want that to come to fruition are more inclined to vote against the cactus root at this point, which is a consequence of my actions, but you know what? We're we're living in a consequ consequence-rich world right now. How you doing there, Tim Beeb? Oh, someone on the Discord actually posted a sprite sheet of Tim Beeb with, like, just a green collar. I don't know if that's something I'd have to mod in, or if I can literally just go into the files and, like, replace a sprite sheet with that, and that would work. I don't exactly have all the knowledge I need to to do that, but I might look into that between streams just to get our green collared Tim Beeb live and in front of us. Because that's, I mean, that's the canon interpretation of Tim Beeb at this point. He's always wearing that Lucky Bow style collar. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. I'm going to get rid of this little bit of grass right here. Maybe I'm not. Because Tim Beeb barked as soon as I said that. It's his little special patch of grass. We will not touch it. Good to know. Good to know. I went to bed right after yesterday's stream and then I dreamt about watching the stream. And then you're up waking up watching the stream. Roisu, I'm, you're embroiled in it. The price of perfection is becoming just as much your life as, as it is mine. So we have no reason to check the greenhouse anymore, really. Except on uh, days when we also fish up our sea cucumber pond. That way we can keep all of the ingredients for Lucky Lunches sort of in equal amounts. We only have five corn plants in the greenhouse as opposed to the nine sea cucumbers that we always fish out, but we have so much extra corn in reserve that it's not really going to matter that much. Beyond that, we're hunting cactus fruit. We're going to get some more crystallariums today. It's a good day to be alive. What if the seed was designed to make everything easy to get, but purposely picked the cactus fruit to take forever? I mean, here's the thing, is that the cactus fruit is probably not even the worst of our concerns. It might feel that way right now because we've been stuck in it for so long. But the Skull Cavern is really where things are going to hit the fan, you know? Because not even Blade, in all of his infinite wisdom and all of his power over the seed, knows when that Skull Cavern grind is going to terminate, because the Skull Cavern treasure rooms are not seeded. They're just, like, randomly determined when you go through the cavern, so... It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Whether luck falls in our favor or not, I'm not entirely sure which way it's going to go yet, obviously, but I have faith. I imagine it's probably going to be one of those situations where we get, like, the first four in, like, a thousand floors, and then, like, the last seed that we need is just going to take, like, a million years. <laughs> That's kind of where my mind is thinking it's going to go right now, because the more seeds that we find, obviously from the treasure rooms, the more likely we are to, or the less likely we are to find the seeds that we're still missing, and the more likely we are to be disappointed when we find the seeds that we've already found. It's, um, it's just a, it's just a reality of probabilistic odds, and we have to all come to terms with it together. It's gonna suck when it actually does happen in real life, but as long as we're all aware of the possibility for it to happen, it's also technically possible that we just get all the five seeds that we need in, like, the first five treasure rooms. But at that point, I would not, uh... <laughs> I would not dispute any discourse that I was cheating at that point, because that is... That would be ridiculous odds. Like, so low odds that it's just fe unfeasible. Possible, but not plausible. You know what I mean? There's, there's a clear and distinct difference there. Good evening, Artemis. Not evening for me, but evening for you, I'm assuming. We need cactus fruit for the desert. That's why there's still no skull caverns. That's correct. For the for the desert and for the um, community center. It's the last thing we need for the community center. Exclamation point FAQ for more detailed information on that. As well as many other things. 
So much jade, I know, right? And we're, we're showing no signs of slowing down here. I am now fully and truly aware of the fact that we probably already have more crystallariums than we really need. But I'm also kind of addicted to the grind now, and I'm just, I just want to see how high the numbers can go. You know, number go up. There's something very satisfying about it. So we're going for 10 more crystallariums today, and no one can stop me. There's a jade, little, like, hiding in here. So it's a natural jade, as opposed to our manufactured uh, false ones. At any rate, we carry on. I don't know how much gold we had in reserve, but I know it was not enough. Because we did, we did actually get some gold on last uh, on the last stream when we were waiting for the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies. So we're not completely goal at a gold deficit here, but we still got a long way to go, I would imagine. Why hold on to the magma geode? I, I just kind of like how it looks, you know. It looks nice and shiny and pristine. Honestly, if I had to pick, like, a favorite sprite in Stardew Valley... I mean, there's probably better options I could think of, but the Magma Geode is just so clean and crisp, and it's a nice little shade of cherry red. I honestly just... it might be up there, for sure. And I'm gonna say, for, like, sprites in Stardew Valley, we're not gonna include character sprites, because that's just not fair. Then Haley would take, like, all... 80, 80 of the top slots, or however many sprites that she has, I don't know. Just would not be realistic. Hello, Zaniela. Welcome, welcome. How we doing today? I'm doing well, Saffron. Your name kind of, like, triggered a memory for me, just because Saffron is the name of a character in Imposters, the TV show, of which I watched the last two episodes of Season 1 last night. And, uh, it was, it was a good time. After the stream, I unwound with that, and... Went to bed, and now here I am. Here I am, anecdote poor, because I haven't had enough time. <laughs> Always with the sus. Anytime, anytime you bring up the curse word, imposters, <laughs> people are going to be sussing out of their minds. I can't blame you. It's just, it's just, you're like Pavlovian dogs, right? You're just trained to react in a certain way. What are we thinking about the chances for the fruit today? It was, I believe it was 83% of belief today, which is lower than the past couple streams for sure, but it's still pretty high. I mean, it's still well, well above what you would normally expect based on our current cactus fruit numbers. We did change out exclamation point cactus fruit for exclamation point trash, but maybe I should make a new exclamation point cactus fruit that just says how many cactus fruit we have. And it'll just keep saying zero over and over again. Just a, just a command that puts the number zero in chat. And then finally when we get to update it, that could be kind of funny. I come up with these like ideas and stuff for commands and funny little jokes, but then I say them out loud and now I can't do them because like it wouldn't be as funny if I enact it now. I need to learn to keep my mouth shut and just keep some ideas to myself so that I can surprise y'all with them. We need exclamation point cactus fruit back. Exclamation point trash is our new savior. Exclamation point cactus fruit abandoned us when we needed it most. Nightbot refused to answer. Now, now exclamation point trash is more our speed until that one inevitably breaks too. I don't. I still don't know what caused that command to break the first time, where just nightbot just would not respond. But uh, making a new one seems to have solved the situation for now. So. Ooh, nice little gold vein right here. Are you gonna go overboard with the growing cactus fruit? I am not I have not yet decided. I could see it going either way. We're gonna start with a single cactus plant and then we'll go from there. There's the full greenhouse full of cacti. Fill our entire ginger island farm with cactus fruit, could you imagine? It would be quite a sight to behold. That, that would be a lot of cacti. Is cacti one of those words that has multiple plurals? Because I know that uh, for the longest time I thought that fish, the only correct pluralization of that was just uh, like fish, kind of like moose and moose. But fishes is also technically correct. 
Is cacti and are cacti and cactuses equally correct? Because I could honestly like cactuses doesn't sound right to my ear because I always say cacti. But if I really dig deep within myself, I can't see a reason that cactuses does not work, right? What's going on? Why is everyone talking about cactus? Well, <laughs> you must be new. It's uh it's SA. Welcome to the stream. Exclamation point FAQ, and you can get caught up to speed by uh, by reading through that for a little bit, probably. Cactus fruit is the new ancient fruit. It's much rarer than ancient fruit for us right now. Although, if you want to be technical, it's not the rarest fruit that we have in this sea, because the, the rare seed itself, the sweet gem berry, that's technically more rare or more costly than the cactus fruit, so... It's all about perspective, right? Either way. It is nuts how, how, like, we're literally, it's literally like that video, like the entire history of the world, I guess. You could make a religion out of this. We're actually making a religion out of cactus fruit right now. I'm not even trying. I'm not, I'm not here to be your messiah. I don't have that big of an ego. At least that's what I tell myself, but... <laughs> It's hard to not get so, a somewhat inflated ego as a streamer. But I try to keep myself in check in that regard a lot of the time by just, like, downplaying as many accomplishments of mine, of mine as I can. That is a thing that I always do, like, actually worry about, to get real for a second with you, is that when you get to a certain level of... I don't want to say fame, because that in and of itself insinuates that I am famous any, in any capacity, which I'm not, to, for the record. I'm slightly, I'm slightly notably popular in a niche cat, in a niche corner of the internet, which we all happen to exist within. And I always try to keep that in perspective, and no matter how, like, big I get or how, how many people recognize my work or enjoy the stuff that I make, I always want to stay grounded, and I get so worried because it seems like such an easy trap to fall into where people start telling you that your stuff is so good, and then you start to believe it yourself, and you poison yourself on the Kool-Aid, and it's, you know, it... I think I'm in an okay spot because I'm aware of that possibility, and I think that makes it less likely that I'm going to succumb to that stardom. I guess, becomes, like, starstruck with myself. But I'm always at least tangentially aware of the possibilities, so I'm gonna need you guys in chat to keep me in check in that regard. If you ever find that I'm becoming, like, overly cocky, have some kind of weird inflated god complex, then, uh, call me out on it, shut me down. Because I don't want to, I don't want to be that person. As an OG viewer from back in the day, I consider your current success with the, within the Stardew Valley community a bit famous. I mean, it's true. I did uh, I did do a lot of stuff before Stardew Valley, obviously, and compared to compared to back then, I've certainly I, I certainly have a higher viewership than I did back then. And I like to think I haven't changed that much, but obviously, people change quite a bit in that amount of time. I don't really need this copper ore. I guess I guess we'll just let it be. And then I will go ahead and just head on out of here so I can put these things in the chest like I was planning to do. There we go. Strike down the god complex. It can be a tough thing to do. But it's important to keep everything in perspective and stay grounded. Realize that we're all just human. We're all still... We all still eat and breathe and go to the bathroom and sleep. We're all the same the end of the day. Well, I mean, not all the same. I mean, we're different in many different, in many cool and special and unique ways, but we're all of the same homo sapiens species. And let me not fool you into believing otherwise. Boss music intensifies. Being late to the stream means less bingo squares for me. You gotta go back and watch the, the first part of the stream, the VOD, and just see if you can catch up with the bingo squares. That's so funny to me that Price Perfection Bingo is actually, like, a thing now. There's a bingo card in the Discord if you're not uh, aware of it. I should honestly pin it, just because people do seem to have a lot of fun with it. And I probably would, too. If more streams had bingo cards, I think that would be a really fun time. I think, I think there might be an untapped market there. 
I do really love the streams of people playing different games, notably like Minecraft, where uh, they play like Minecraft bingo and try to compete against their friends in order to get the get the bingo first by completing random tasks within the game. Those kind of videos are literally like crack cocaine for me. It's it's so fun to watch, and there's just something perfect about that formula. Then Unsurpassable Zed goes and does it with uh, with Stardew Valley. I know he did like one a long time ago in the past, but then he did one recently, and it's like, hell yeah. I would I would love to do one of those, honestly. I think that'd be a really fun time. I just need to find a a good format to do it in and a good person to do it with. A lockout, yeah, lockout is 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 a good interpretation of that as well. It's basically the same as bingo, except like you don't have to get a line. It's just whoever gets the most squares. And anytime you get a square, you lock out the other person from being able to do that task. Both of them have their pros and their cons, for sure, and I do like both of them in pretty equal measure, because they're just similar enough. I do an SDV bingo with you, thank you. I don't know, realistically, I'd probably reach out to, like, a... Because, like, I do appreciate the sentiment, but I don't think just doing it with a random uh, viewer or random person in chat would be the way to go. I'd probably do it with someone who is a little more in the know when it comes to, like, content creation and stuff. A fellow content creator, if you will. We'll see. It might be in the future, but... I have no plans. I, I mean, I have enough on my plate as it is, as far as, like, projects that I'm working on in the background, and obviously the price of perfection is kind of the bulk of that right now. It takes up a lot of my time. So I really need to... That's, that is a problem, a trap that I can easily fall into, is that I do... I get so many different ideas for projects that I need to... But I just need to realize that I need to, like, finish one before I can actually start on another one. Like, it gets so... Okay, I'm, I need to get out of here. <laughs> I was. I think that bat could have killed me in one more hit, and I realized they didn't have any food, so I that last gold ore was not going to be worth it. I'll tell you that right now. All right. Crisis avoided. <laughs> Everyone calm down. I don't know if anyone was panicking in chat, but you would have good good cause to, for sure. Didn't mean to drink that. I just wanted to take the minecart, but I guess a little a little espresso at 12:30 a.m. What harm could that do, right? Always about to have the worst dream sequence of her life. All right, we'll sell that. Um, honestly, like sell these. I mean, I should just keep the gems and stuff because, like, we don't. I'm I'm in a bit of a weird position where I don't need the gems for anything, but I also don't need to sell them for anything. So. What the heck do I even do, right? Just don't even collect them at all, I suppose, is, is, the, is the real answer there. But they're so shiny, and they're, like, right there. And I have room in my inventory. It is weird how you, like, still prior how, how I still prioritize certain items over others when I'm, like, going through the mines and my inventory gets full. When most of the time it really doesn't matter, because a lot of them are just, uh, have no more value for us. It's a decaf, don't worry. I don't know about that. <laughs> At least you didn't bomb Greg again. True facts. Elaine coming in here with the real lore. Throw gems into the lake to feel something. <laughs> I don't want to feel anything too strongly before the cactus root comes along because I want that to be a euphoric moment. I'm building up this very, like, this... This in intrinsic sense of uh, ennui and malaise and tediousness within the stream, so that when we finally do get the cactus fruit and break free from that mold, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful moment. I can only hope, anyway. Alright, get some more gold in here. Go! Some iridium ore you shouldn't have. Like, literally, you shouldn't have. I have 265 of them now. All right, and we do have so we got 15 more gold smelting there. Plus we got another. How many? How many gold is that? I can't. I can do math. I promise. That's like 14, 15 gold, 15 more here. 
So that'll bring us up to 45 gold bars. We're actually all, almost at the point already where we have enough gold for our crystallariums for the day. I didn't realize that it could go that fast sometimes. How do you have so much Iridium War? Literally from checking the Statue of Perfection every single day and not doing that much with it, with the Iridium that we've garnered. Because you get like two to eight Iridium War from that thing every day. And over the course of five and a half years, or I guess it's not five and a half years, it's however it would have been like, what, three and a half years? It adds up. <laughs> Doing that every day, surprisingly enough, makes a difference. I do still remember the days when we were just scraping the bottom of a super cucumber fish pond for Iridium War, though. Those were, man, that, that was a long time ago. We've come a long way since then. And yet, that was, even that was still part of the cactus fruit grind, so... Cactus fruit is eternal, it would seem. You're back from Brazil? I, I, oh yeah, you were out on Brazil, isn't that right? Well, welcome back, I hope you had a good time. Brazil, I mean, any of those South American countries, it's, they're countries that... I like to admire from a distance because I feel like the heat and humidity would actually, like, literally kill me. I'm just not built for that. Born and raised in the distant northern lands of, uh, Canada. Streaming live from an igloo right now. For real. I'm not, uh, I'm not equipped to handle, handle, like, the likes of the Amazon rainforest or anything, even within proximity. But more power to you if you enjoy that sort of uh, climate, for sure. Doesn't it suck to go for trash cans every day, then check the traveling card every time? We don't have to check the traveling card anymore, thankfully, because... Uh, exclamation point cart, that rare seed is the only thing left, and... We know for a fact, thanks to Blade, our... Our man in the... Our man in the field, our man in the code. That that's not going to come until year 13, so. Thankfully, we don't have to do that anymore. Although, I do miss her from time to time. I often think about her, and like, maybe we should send her a postcard or something. What do you guys think? I should have made her an option for the fan pick, fanfic poll, exclamation point bet. That would have been, <laughs> that could have been an interesting story, too. It's been so long since I've written anything that now that this fanfic idea is on the table again, I'm starting to have to brainstorm ideas, and I don't know if it was just being away for so long from writing things in general, or what it is. Because I used to have such trouble coming up with ideas, but now, like, the ideas just won't stop flowing. Which is definitely a good thing. I have so many different ways that I could take these, uh, whatever fanfic I end up writing. Not that I'm going to end up writing a fanfic, because, I mean, we're not going to... It's... We're... Come on. If you really are in the camp that you believe that we're not going to get the cactus fruit before 5,000 garbage cans, what are you doing with your life? Do you even know me? I've gotten... I've... I've I'm so committed, and I've told you the odds already. 1 in 540 chance for a cactus fruit? How are we not going to get one... At least one within 5,000 garbage cans, right? Literally just not possible. It's like 10 times the odds. If you don't think about it too hard. I do need to... I'm, I'm, I'm realizing now that I've forgotten my food again. I'm ashamed of my words and my deeds. I should go grab some for when I'm diving this deep into the mines for sure. Let's go take care of that right now. And we get exclamation point Chloe with the types of things she say. I don't know. I don't. I don't have a good. Uh, as that's one thing I am interested to see how it pans out when I start writing. If I do end up having to write a story, is how I'm gonna vocalize Chloe, because she's gonna have dialogue. Like it's it's kind of a kind of has to happen. You don't. I mean, you don't. You don't have to have a dialogue to make a story. But in general, I think the stories that I would want to write would have her speaking. So it would. Uh, she won't be the silent protagonist that we've all come to know and love. And you do speak sometimes in Stardew Valley and like the hard events and stuff, but every character sounds the same in those. We need to give Chloe her own unique voice. She's not like other girls. 
she's much more stubborn and hard-headed in her determination for spending as little money as possible. 500 gold for a bus ticket? No thanks. I'll just spend the next six years of my life scouring through garbage cans. Could not be me in real life. That's a long time to commit to <laughs> to saving 500 bucks. Which, like, in, in... Like, I don't know what the real-world conversion rate between dollars in Stardew Valley and, like, Canadian dollars or U.S. dollars would be. But there's no way that a, f a bus ticket is $500. Maybe it's more like yen, where it's like, uh, like 500 gold is 500 yen, so it's like more like $5. That seems a little more reasonable to me, for sure. Unless the bus company is literally run by Joja, which it could be, I suppose. Oh, my nose is a little runny today. I get that sometimes, this time of day. It's just, uh, just a habit, I don't know. Not getting sick, I promise. <laughs> Although I do worry, because some of my coworkers have been uh, getting sick lately. I wonder if there's something going around. I don't think it's... Uh, they've all tested negative for COVID, but... There's many other illnesses out there that are not COVID, so... Who knows? Spaghetti costs 600 and a beer costs 400 so if we translate that and assume it's more like yen, then it would be like $6 for a plate of spaghetti and $4 for a beer. I mean, that those are some cheap prices when you put it in that perspective, but it also means that a, like a whole diamond sells for like $7.50. So maybe it's not a perfect conversion rate. Maybe Stardew Valley just exists in its own economy. Unless these are like the worst quality diamonds you've ever seen in your life. Cauliflower sells for seventeen fifty. Makes sense. Cauliflower doesn't sell for seventeen fifty. That's there's no there's no way that's correct. That's, I'm 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 working the numbers back in my head. It would be a dollar seventy five for a cauliflower probably. Just divide by a hundred, right? I'll let you guys in on a little secret. I've been slowly. I don't know when it's going to come to pass, but I do. it is a project that I have sort of been working on uh, intermittently. I'm working on making a game where it's, it's like a Stardew Valley related game where you get uh, if you ever played that like high low game where it's uh, like you have to guess how many like which of the two options presented to you has had more monthly Google searches on average. It's kind of like that, but it's more like you get two Stardew Valley items with various qualifiers, and then you have to guess which one costs more. Like you get the cost, you get the price of one, and then you have to guess whether or not the one that you've been given, the second one, costs more or less than that, or would sell for more or less. I think it's a simple enough concept that I can execute it with my relatively limited programming knowledge, but still, it would be it would be kind of fun, honestly. I think. And if any junior programmers are out there and want to, like, steal that idea, uh, as long as you give me, like, a 5% royalty, I'm, you know what, no, <laughs> I got no complaints. I'm, I kid, of course. You can, like, take the idea and run with it if you really want to. I'm putting it out there into the public domain now, so I can't really stop anyone because I'm so slow at making things that someone who has a lot more time on their hands than I do can probably bang that one out much, much, more, much, much more quickly. Over under Stardew Edition? More or less, yeah. I actually wanted to do it in a way that was like, um, you sort of start building out a timeline. It, I think it was, it was, uh, there was a game that was called Wiki Trivia. I don't know if it's still around or not. But it was basically a similar idea to the over under thing, where you are given a random Wikipedia article, and you have to guess whether that thing, like what year that thing was established, and you start building out a timeline, so it, it usually starts off pretty easy because it'll be like, all right, the construction of the ancient pyramids, did that come sooner or later than like Britney Spears' most recent album? And it's like, that's pretty easy. But once you start getting so many different articles on there, the time gaps start becoming narrower and narrower. And that was the idea I originally had for 
for this little game that I wanted to make where you, the, the, the gaps in prices become narrower and narrower, so you have to start to slot things into different positions, and I, th I think that could be fun too. I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's a two different game mode situation. But there's a lot of potential there to be mined, honestly. Once I started looking into it, I realized, like, you can take the base prices for Stardew Valley items, but then there's so many things that impact the price of those items. Like, whether they have uh, variable quality, whether there's professions that, aff that, affect, uh, that affect their prices, whether there's, like, other random little things that can affect their prices, like um, the bear's knowledge and, you know, spring leak or spring onion mastery, that sort of thing. There's... You could, you could do many different variables and modular things with it, and it can it kind of spider webs out into some crazy complexity. But I think that's what would make it for a fun game. Imagine GeoGuessr, but Stardew Edition. Didn't, uh, didn't Unsurpassable Zed do that? I didn't watch the video, but I'm pretty sure that I saw he posted a video that was like Stardew GeoGuessr. Which GeoGuessr is its own crazy fun game, honestly. If you're not familiar with it, it's basically like uh, you're dropped into a random spot in Google Street View, and you have to guess where on Earth you are based on like context clues you can find just by looking around. And it really is just that simple, but I mean, it, the world's a pretty big place, so it's it can be very hard to discern sometimes. Hello there, hand over your NFTs. That's That's a great name. You'd like to see Blade versus Habu in this game? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. How, I, I feel like I would not do that well at the game that I've, like, invented in my head. Like, I'd probably do better than the average person just because I'm... I'm, number one, I'd be, I'd be like, making it so I'd know sort of just by osmosis what the prices of certain things might be. But it's the prices of things that you, like, sell in Stardew Valley, it's not internalized very well. I just, like, know that certain things are more more or less expensive than others to to a s slight degree. I don't know. I don't know if I'd be good at the game, but definitely Blade versus Habu could be an interesting... <laughs> an interesting sight in that one. I don't know how confident they are in their ability to discern Stardew Valley prices. Probably pretty confident, I would imagine. They, they both played enough of the game or looked into it enough, so... Who is Blade and who is Habu? I'm so confused. I'm sorry, it's SA. I, we've we've been going, on, going on the assumption that most people here are already familiar with the stream, but I should never do that, I guess. Blade is... They're, they're both other Stardew Valley content creators. Blade specifically is uh, the one who helped us find the seed that made this challenge even remotely possible. Even remotely possible, even. If I can speak. And Habu is just a really talented speedrunner slash challenge runner of the game. Just a great player of the game in general. And a good streamer. Go check out his stuff and Blade stuff. And, you know, any any Stardew Valley content creator that I've mentioned on on the stream, just go check them out. Get, give, them, give them a glance. Maybe their stuff is for you. Maybe it's not. Either way, I think it's... Uh, I think everyone's worth a look. At the very, very least. Blade would win. He's secretly Mr. Chi. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's about the closest analog that we have in real life. Absolutely. Blade is basically an encyclopedia. I mean, yeah, that's true. But even Blade, I think he'd have to think for a minute. And if, like, you were to be like, hey, Blade, how much does a silver quality uh, bok choy sell for if you don't have the tiller profession? I think he might have to think for a minute on that one. I don't. Th I don't know if he'd have an exact answer off the top of his head. But I guess in the game I'm proposing, you wouldn't have to have an wouldn't have to have an exact exact answer. You'd just you'd have to be like, hey, is that bok choy that I mentioned more or less expensive than a uh, gold quality parsnip with the tiller profession? And to that, that would that would be a hard comparison for me, honestly. I I, I could I don't know if I could tell you. I would probably go with the bok choy on that, but who, who really knows? 
he's combed through the code and understood what he's digging through. I mean, once you understand a language, a computer language, that's the thing is honestly, they call it a programming language for a reason. It's basically is just like learning a new language like French or Spanish or Latin or whatever you want to do. And once you have fluency in that language, you can look at code and just kind of read it. I, I know what he's, uh, I, I'm not as good as, as Blade or a lot of other people, obviously, at reading code, but it is just kind of like a learned skill for sure. It can be very daunting when you're first starting out, of course. But even if you don't know everything that's going on in the code, there might be some keywords or functions or whatever, whatever else that you're not familiar with. You can probably hazard a pretty good guess if you have a passing knowledge of, uh, if you, if you have at least a passing knowledge of programming in general, you can usually make a pretty good educated guess. Oh, is it someone's birthday in here? Hold on. Amber, it's your birthday? Happy birthday! Can we get some uh, Argon love and Argon hype or birthday cake emojis, depending on uh, what? It, it looks like you're already, most of you are one step ahead of me already, but uh, happy birthday, Amber. Very, very exciting. I'd, I'd ask how old you're turning, but I know some people are uncomfortable with that question, so... <laughs> oh, and you have, a, you have a broken foot, too. I mean, that's not a great birthday present, but at least you're making the most of it. Happy to have you here. Very honored, very honored indeed. All right, let's go ahead and smelt some of this stuff. I kept the sashimi for who knows what reason. That should be, it belongs, it belongs in a mines chest. All right, get all this smelting. And I think that should be more than enough resources for our crystallariums. Uh, I did grab this jade. Oh my, I should... I, gra I grabbed the jade from the crystallarium. It's gonna offset our timer crystallarium, isn't it? I can't I can't go collect the crystal. I, got, I just gotta go. It's fine. It's whatever. I'll just have to wait. I'll just have to skip the jade, the crystallarium harvest this time and then wait for the timer to resync because otherwise it's gonna be all kinds of screwed up. No big deal. There we go. Off to bed? I think so. Twenty-four years young today. Dang. I remember when I was twenty-four a whole three years ago. Ooh. Wasn't much different than right now, honestly, except I didn't uh <laughs> I didn't really stream or do any of that stuff. Not during that part not during that portion of my life. Crazy how, like, so much can change in such a small amount of time like that, and yet you can still feel like the same person. It's just wild. It really is. Good day, young Radia. Welcome to the stream. Happy to have you here. You definitely won't have enough jade now. <laughs> I mean, we do need many, many thousands of jade. If we wanted to make this Skull Cavern process as painless as possible. Oh no, I didn't grab the Jade from- oh, okay, I must have just had two Jade ready from, uh, from the mines. That's- okay, that makes- that makes a lot more sense, so I- Crisis averted, not that it was really a crisis. 24 was a decade ago for you? Oof. I mean, we all get there eventually. I mean, hope- hopefully. <laughs> we all get there. But even that, like, even, like, mid-30s is not that old. There's still plenty of time ahead of you. On average, more time ahead of you than behind you, so... Just think of it that way. Hard to think of it that way all the time, especially because, like, each year that comes by seems to go faster than the last one. Just based on time dilation. But still, it's, I mean, it is it is a true fact. You have both more time than you think you do and less time than you think you do, depending on the way that you think of it. Just gotta try to make the most of every day, but if you don't make the most of every day, not everyone can make the most of every single day 
of their entire life. In fact, I would probably wager that most people do not make the most of every day. And that's okay. We are imperfect creatures, and that imperfection is part of what makes us beautiful. Part of what makes us human, I would dare say. Things are starting to hurt more now. I mean, yeah, yeah. Your body does start to betray you as you get older. That's, that's there's no doubt about that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, I don't know why I held on to all this gold and stuff. Let me go ahead and sort out my inventory real quick here. Then we'll go off to the quarry. Then, I guess we're, I guess we're pretty much done with Crystallarium resource harvesting today. So we'll just go like right to bed. <laughs> Is it already that time? Not even an hour into the stream, we're done with our crystallariums. We can just uh, go all cactus fruit all day, every day, except for like the Stardew Valley Fair, which is coming up relatively fast. You children know nothing, gestures in old age. I just imagine Abe Simpson swinging his cane at me. Programming languages are better than regular languages. Their grammar actually makes sense. Ooh, got him! You tell all those, uh, all those primordial people who slowly developed languages over hundreds of years. It is true, though. I mean, computer languages are much more precise than your average, like, speaking language or written language. Mostly because they have to be, because computers are so dumb that they don't they don't understand things unless you give them the most specific instructions literally possible. You just can't optimize every day, and that's completely fine. Agreed, a hundred percent agreed. In fact, I mean, don't op you you can't optimize most days. I would I would say. I think most days you're going to have more wasted time than time that you spent actually productively doing things. But it's not really wasted time if you're, like, de-stressing or entertaining yourself in some capacity, having fun. It might not be, like, the work that needs to get done, but it's still good work to... It's still good to be taking care of yourself. Still, you got to take care of yourself first before you can take care of anyone else. My gold bar is just about done here, which means we can actually make the crystallariums today. And we might as well do that because uh, we just started a new crystallarium cycle over at the over at the quarry. So let's get that all made up. Like so. Ten more crystallariums. Actually, we might be able to make more than ten today. Because we do have some more stone. We can make a single one more, by my math. 11 crystallariums. The lucky 11th crystallarium. Rarely seen around these parts. I am going to get this some of this iridium ore smelting as well, because I just see that we have so much of it right now. Get that going. I will also bring some crystal pathways with me, in case we need them. And away we go. Have a good one there, Gail. Thanks for tuning in for a bit. Enjoy your class. I may ask you one question. How can you keep focus on... on gr Wait. How, how can you keep the focus to keep on grinding? I honestly don't have a great answer for you. I wish, I wish I did have a better answer, but it's just kind of part of who I am to a certain extent, is that I'm very patient and very... I can get easily distracted, just like we all can to a certain extent, but... I do kind of just lose myself a lot of time in the mindless grind, especially if I'm doing something off stream like this, where it's very monotonous and just the same thing over and over again. Uh, sometimes I'll listen to like a podcast, other times I won't. Other times I'll just, you know, I'm able to sort of distract myself with my own thoughts and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so we're doing one of these, right? We're snaking back around again. We'll do it like, I think this is the way to go right here. For right now. Yeah, I don't know if it's, I don't know if there's any advice I can give you other than to try and 
exercise patience more often. Like, if you're not a very patient person, I honestly don't know the best way to become more patient other than to try and push yourself a little bit more every day. Like, if you find, like... I don't know, there's probably, you probably, there's probably better people to talk to that talked about this than me. But I imagine there's some kind of exercise you could do to expand your patience for sure. And why did you choose this painful challenge? Because I was interested in the answer. And doing the research for it was not enough. I had to do it live in order to understand the full repercussions of the monster that I've created. I am something of a masochist too, I suppose. <laughs> I enjoy... I don't know. I enjoy the ans finding the answers to seemingly insane, arbitrary, otherwise inane questions. And this is sort of wrapped up in that. You know what, I was gonna go right to bed here, because we are done with our crystallariums and stuff, but let's do a little, uh, we'll do a little Junimo cart as sort of like a victory lap. It's a bit early in the stream compared to when we normally do Junimo cart. But I'm feeling like rewarding myself today. And sometimes you gotta indulge, right? You gotta splurge. Welcome welcome to the stream, Liam. We indeed have not gotten the cactus fruit, as you can see. We're 4,200, almost 4,300 deep. Quickly serenade the cactus, as we, uh, as we do every now and again. Um, and you know what? Let's make things a little interesting this time with the, with the Juno cart. Let me put up a poll. Will Argon complete? Will Argon beat Junimo Cart on this run? Get your name in ink there. Obviously, it doesn't show who voted what. I kind of wish that they did that, just so that there, we could have a little kind of like side bet going on or something. But I want, I'm, I'll still be interested to see how the numbers shake out here. How much do you believe I've improved in Junimo Kart today? 100% of people currently saying no, he will not beat Junimo Kart on this run. You know, I'm I'm glad that we are all on the same page, chat. Thank you, thank you. That's the kind of vote of confidence that I need. Yeah, great. I, well, okay. Uh, off to a bit of a weird start, but we did make it work. We're also still hunting that secret where if you go through the entire first level without dying and getting all the fruit and getting the coins, all the coins, that you get a, a secret hidden level. I'm excited to see that. Not gonna happen on this run, obviously, because we already died once, but it is what it is. There's there's really, I feel like that a particular secret, a lot of it does come down to luck because most Junimo Kart levels, I would say that they boil down to skill as to whether or not you can beat them. Whether or not you can collect every single collectible without dying a single time. I don't, th I don't think that every level is constructed to be possible that way. Some of them pr are probably like literally straight up impossible or otherwise very, very diff difficult to execute on. Man, my voice is cracking all over the place today. I guess that's what happens when you stream in such, seem, stream twice in such quick succession that your, your voice kind of takes a hit. Should have seen that one coming, I suppose, but oh well, at least I'll have a, a bit of a longer break between this stream and the next. Need to warm up first. 52% of people currently believe that this is the run where we beat Junimo Kart. I'm glad that you all have, or that at least half of you have some kind of confidence in me in that regard. I'll try to do you proud. Now that there's a little something on the line like this, it makes me a little more incentivized to, to do better. Whether that translates to an actual improvement in skill remains to be seen. Also going to do my best to beat this level sub 60 seconds so that we can all ooh and ah over the, uh, over beating, over skipping to the, skipping the third level, I should say. Sorry. Tripping over my words all over the place today. I feel like we're on good pace right now, but I don't know how long I can keep that up necessarily. That felt good. I think the real like linchpin to beating this level sub 60 se sub 60 seconds is to not die and then to also do like these kind of skip jumps like that sometimes i don't know i don't know if you have to not die and beat it sub 60 or how it works but we must be pretty close if it was just the time limit on that one not quite good enough that's all right 
Off to the Gem Sea Giant we go. We haven't seen Slomp in a minute, but... The game just knows that it needs to be extra challenging for me because I'm getting so much better that they need to they need to push push me to my absolute limits here. And I think we can all agree that the Gem Sea Giant is certainly more difficult than Slomp's freaking Stomp. I don't know if anyone would argue otherwise. That said, even though the game does clearly want to challenge me, please, no mushrooms. Can we get just no mushrooms in chat? Sp spam, spam, no, no mushroom. No mushroom. We need to get that energy out there early, as early as possible. Next level is not, cannot even be the mushroom level, but I want it, uh, I want it in writing. It was almost amazing, <laughs> for the record. I almost got that fruit and everything, but... It's fine. There we go. Good stuff. No mushes. No mushroom. Mushroomless, exactly. Just no mushroom. Not even any kind of emoji. Just the phrase "no mushroom." You can all you can, you can be like Froglin, throw the emoji in there. But you like mushrooms, Elaine. Whether you have whether you have a personal proclivity towards mushrooms or not, it's a hellish level. Please don't put that evil upon me. I will also fully admit that Glowstream Grotto is probably the most aesthetically pleasing level in the game. Which puts me a little bit at odds with it, because it's like, it's a really hard level, but also ooh pretty. I'm willing to make that sacrifice, though. I'm, w I'm willing to look at the more mundane, volcanic atmosphere of the other, uh, of the other option for that level than the ethereal beauty of so many of so many big mushrooms and things. This is all predicated on the assumption, by the way, that I do beat a uh, Ghastly Galley in here, which is not a guarantee, but I feel like it's, uh, I feel like I'm good enough that it, there's the over under on me beating this level should be higher than, as opposed to lower. Higher than not, I suppose. We did get all three fruit, which will mean an extra life for whatever level that we do happen to get in this run here. No mushrooms, thank you, thank you. No mush, you can do- no, not much, not mush you can do about it. Chat, you did it, you did it. Currently 53% of people believing. I don't know if that number is bound to go up or down as far as the poll goes, as, or- because the poll is still ongoing. I probably should have closed it before I actually like got into the game here realistically. that people couldn't, uh, like, wait and then change their mind based on how far I got into this run, because this is it's shaping up to be a pretty good run. But that can all come crumbling down very quickly, as we've seen happen in the past. Hold on, I'm cracked. I'm, I'm, <laughs> what the heck? Do you see how many freaking lives I have? We're going, we're gonna go off the screen? Double row of lives this late into the game. That was a deathless run of that level. This might be the one. This might... We got we got seven lives going into the final level. Holy crap. How's that 45% of doubters feeling right now, huh? Sunset Speedway, seven lives? <laughs> Just don't squander it. Seven lives is still no guarantee. All right, see, we're down to six lives already. It's not... Uh, let's not... Let's not... Don't get too inside your own head about it. Mm, okay, we're down to five lives. No worries, no worries. Still more than you would realistically expect for this point in the game. A single checkpoint would go a long way right about now. Okay, thank you. Mm, okay. A morsel of a checkpoint, thank you. This could go all the way. That's an extra life right there. This one could go the distance, I don't know, I don't know, chat. Was it the pole? This is the first one that we've actually had a pole on? Was that the energy infusion that I needed in order to actually pull this off? Could he be? Oh, okay, okay. 
I was getting a little high, getting a little high on my own fumes right there. We gotta, we still gotta pull this out. We still gotta clutch this out. It's not a done deal. Un it's not a done deal. It's not a done deal. Okay. Focus. Don't get this close now, okay? Don't do this to me. I hate these high tracks. Don't choke now, please. For the love of all that is good, you can do this. You've beaten, you've, beat, you've done so much worse than this. You've done so many harder things, both in this game and others. It's nothing. It's nothing. You're almost there. You got one jump. He's done it. Is there a Junimo Karts credit sequence? Or are we just going on to World 2? I don't know. I've never been this far in my life. What is, what is, what's happening? He's home. We brought him home. Ladies and gentlemen, get your Argon hypes out there in chat. Look at the Junimo party. You beat Junimo Kart. I was here. If you were here, were, were you here? Were you, Spam it. Spam it in chat. Were you here? That's amazing. We actually did it. Let me end that poll. It rose to a total of 60% belief that we would beat Junimo Kart that run? I've never done that on this challenge or any other. You beat Junimo Kart. Can we expect a letter in the mail tomorrow? Let's freaking go. Oh my gosh. We're gonna complete our home arcade systems. Holy crap. We actually did it and then we can start doing Junimo Kart Endless Mode. Thank you all for joining me for that. That was, I mean, that was a good performance. Fell off a little bit at the very end there, but you know what? I, holy heck. <laughs> it, it's the truly the greatest story. Like, it's it's a story of like, hey, practice makes perfect. I started really trash at Junimo Kart. I was, I could not even beat the first level, the first two levels consistently without losing all my lives. Look at where we've come. Look at how far we've come just by sheer perseverance, dedication, practice, just about every day doing a Junimo Kart run. I didn't believe that I'd get here. I don't know how far we have to go from here as far as Junimo Kart Endless Mode. I don't know. Do we have world record sites? Probably not. Probably This is probably a very high world record to strive for, but uh, I'm glad you were all here for this. Thank you, thank you. CK Buttons and Ms. Bun, thank you for becoming YouTube members as well off the back of that. I greatly appreciate the support on the Neutron and Positron cheer, respectively. Um, <laughs> get some Argon love and Argon hype for, for the new members in chat, as well as the super chats that I'll get to in a second here. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Enjoy your emotes and your swords. June with the $5 super chat. You brought him home. We, sure, we certainly did. First the Prairie King, and now the Junimo. It's all coming. Haley, Haley, are you proud of me? Did you see what I did? Were you watching the stream? I've never been to the forest, you know. It's, it's, it's a secret code because the Junimos are forest spirits. And Kuro Okami with the $10 super chat as well. Thank you so much. I rejoined you for the first time in weeks and got here right before you beat Junimo Kart. You're our lucky charm. It's confirmed. Thank you, Kuro, for showing up and showing your support. Greatly, greatly appreciated. Oh, man. That was... It's an adrenaline rush. I, I I wasn't quite as excited as I honestly thought I would be when I finally did get there. It was a little bit of muted excitement, but that's sometimes... Sometimes it's just that cathartic release of doing something over and over and over again, and finally... it's It was like its own little mini cactus root grind, right? Just the same thing over and over again, and then finally clutching it out at the end there. Do you ever think about the future, is what Haley, want, what Haley says? <laughs> Always forward, never back. Always forward, never back. Let's do it. I got a lovely spot for my Junimo Kart arcade system right about here. I think it's I think it's coming in the mail tomorrow, if my sources are to be trusted. Off to bed with us. That was a good day. She goes to the forest literally all the time to take pictures. Yeah, I don't know what like forest she's talking about. Unless she's actually, like, literally talking about the secret woods, in which case nobody goes there because it's blocked off. But it is still a factual statement, I suppose. Do you think that the change of music around our house had a had an impact on our Junimo Kart performance? 
because we only recently changed away from Pickle Jar Rag for the first time in a long time to Alone with Relaxing Tea. And all of a sudden, we become Cracked a Junima card? I don't know. I don't know. We also had a really good Prairie King run to this song on the on yesterday's stream, so... Congratulations, double exclamation point! You beat all the levels in Junimo Kart. They can't even spell the <laughs> Junimo Kart. Why is it spelled like without a, without a space here and then Junimo Kart development team? Get your get your stuff together. You're actually the first person in the entire Ferngill Republic to do so. World record, world first. Your prize, a home version of Junimo Kart. Thank you. I've never had this in my possession in my life. It's beautiful. It kind of looks like a weird little face. I'm not going to lie. Right there, buddy. Yeah, I never really noticed that. This is like a little one-eyed monster here. This one's a this one's a little dude, robot dude with glasses or something. My pareidolia. Junimos like tea. I mean, but who doesn't like tea realistically? Cries in copy editor. <laughs> My thoughts, exactly. How do they track that? Yeah, I mean, I guess someone could have beaten it and then just never... I don't know. Maybe maybe the system is connected to Skynet somewhere? The Juno McCart arcade system is, like, connected via online capabilities and they just track it, but... Who knows? It's one of those games that you have to have an internet connection in order to even play single player. I feel like there are games out there like that, but uh, I don't know... I can't think of a good example right now of a game that's online but single player only. Other than games that are like like Flash games that you play on websites, obviously. That kind of goes without saying. But a game that you like download, but you have to have an internet connection in order to play. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Oh, maybe Hitman? Maybe the Hitman games are like that? Because they, it's always like tracking your high score and putting it on the leaderboard, and I think, I mean, you can still play them offline, but you don't get nearly as much of a good experience out of it. Sends a signal to the headquarters. Do you think Junimo Card is a secret like recruitment pro program for Joja Mart? It's like a Polybius situation. It is a blue machine, so I mean, I don't know. You need you need internet for Super Auto Pets single player. You can play single player Super Auto Pets. I thought the whole idea of that game was like putting your team against other people. Sekiro, I mean Sekiro and Dark Souls and all that. You can play those offline. You just don't get like uh, you're not able to get people to like summon to help with bosses or messages or anything. But I don't know. Maybe Sekiro is different because I didn't play enough Sekiro to know. A lot of free-to-pay mobile games. Mobile games are kind of their own category, too, though. They're in their own little niche. What was the first mobile game? I guess that's... I guess that question is... The answer to that question depends on how you define a mobile game. Because it, is it just a game that you play on a mobile device? In which case, I don't know, is it like Snake for the Nokia cell phone, the very first one? Gotta be up there. Honorable, honorable mention for sure. Other people in chat are saying this. Many people are saying this, so it must be true. Snake. Snake. Snake! I think it was Snake. I, it seems it seems to be the most uh, popular answer for sure. Tetris according to Wikipedia. Interesting. How you doing, Timbeat? Quick staring contest? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> You're it's three and oh, Tim Beeb is three and oh in staring contests. We'll get him eventually, though. All right. Um, you know what? Now that we actually have it here, let's let's take a crack. Let's just set a bar, okay? Let's. I'm not going to do too much endless mode here, but let's see how far I can get on my first ever endless mode run here. I've never done endless mode in Junimo Kart, so. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. I've seen it played. I know how the game goes. I know how it is different from progress mode. And then if you die one time, that's a reset. So let's see. 
Let's see how well we can do here. Just, let's, we'll just set a precedent. How good is Chloe at this? And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and we'll make a poll. Um, I'm not gonna set the bar too crazy high. Will we beat Shane's score? In fact, you know what? I'm gonna let this poll run and then we'll do another day of garbage hunting and then we'll come back to this. Did you know card endless? In order to not like scuff the numbers of the poll. Will we beat Shane's score on our first attempt of endless mode? I'm not going to shoot for the moon. I'm not so crazy to think that I could get 50,000 or more on my first Junimo Kart Endless Run. So we'll, we'll come back to that once the after people have had a chance to actually vote in the poll. For now, we're just going to go to sleep and continue onward. Yeah, the early gamer, you just missed it, actually. It was just like like 10, 20 minutes ago or something that we beat, uh, that would be Junimo Kart. Another very even split poll. 55% of people do think that I have it in me to beat Shane's score. On my very first endless attempt. One week from today, we do have the Stardew Valley Fair, so we gotta keep that in mind. We got a whole big tradition that we go through with that, so get yourselves ready for that excitement. I know I will be prepared. Be prepared. It's great that we'll soon be connected with the king who we all time adore. I'm not going to besmirch your ears too much here. Misunderstood Opossum, thank you so much for the 25 pound super chat. Oh my god, <laughs> you guys are very generous today. This is the first stream I'm watching, but I'm glad to finally be here. It seems a little late, but I wanted to show my support before uh, lurking and playing Stardew alongside you. Thank you very much to thank you very much for the support. I hope you enjoy your starting play session as much as I'm enjoying mine right now. All the best to you. Greatly appreciate it. What is the odds of getting a cactus fruit? We always go back to one in five hundred and forty. Whether or not that's true is uh, up to debate still, but I think it's a good ballpark estimate. To get to get fifty thousand, you have to beat the slomp, slomp, stomp, or the whale. I think we have it in us. On a single life, it's a little dicier, but you, like Junimo Car Endless, it's the same levels, but they're much, much shorter, and you only have a single life. And it, so, like, if you die, that's the thing. Like, we could die just like immediately on on the very first level of Endless mode, and just. <laughs> It's always a distinct possibility, even for, like, pro Junimo Kart players. I have to imagine that that happens every now and again. But you can get half of that? I'm glad you believe it, Alice. I'm glad. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little... <laughs> I, I, I don't want to let down the believers out here. 56% of people think that I have it in me to, to do that. To get 25,000 right out the gate. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I honestly don't know how feasible it is to get 25,000 or more. I don't know whether that's like a, a pretty good score or if it's just like peanuts or what. All I know is that there is a quest later on from Mr. Chi that you can get where he wants to get 50,000. Ooh, 50,000 points in Junimo Card Endless. And I always hear people griping about that one. So I have to imagine 25,000 is still pretty admirable. 25,000 is the first two levels done well. I don't know if I'm going to do them that, do them well enough to meet that standard, but we'll see. Aren't the odds of getting a cactus for 50%? You either get it or you don't. <laughs> we, we don't play with those kinds of odds around here. We only do real hard-hitting math. For instance, we know that we, we've done the calculations, and we know that we probably have to get somewhere between like 25 and 30,000 jades, realistically, in order to secure a good chance to get all the treasure room seeds that we need. Exclamation point treasure. So 
we still got a little ways to go in that regard. Well, actually, let me see how close we are. If we if we really do need like 25,000-ish jades. What is this? Because how many rows are each of these? It's like 12 to a row, so we got... Like, like about, like, close to 14,000, 13 and a half thousand here. It's pretty good. That's, I mean, that's a pretty good amount of jades. That's a, that's a lot of staircases, to be sure. But not quite enough yet. We're getting there, though. We're getting there. All right, let me sell all this nonsense here. We'll keep all the coral. Although I think I already have more than enough coral at this point for anything that I need, so I probably don't even need to collect it anymore. And, let's see. I don't think I did uh, more trash, by the way, so let me go ahead and pop that in there real quick. Or did I do it? Did I do it before the, the super chat or after? No, I didn't. I did not yet, so there we go. I'm going to go ahead and close out the pool. 58% of people think that it's uh, in the cards. Not a super high margin, but it is more belief than not, which I'm flattered by. Thank you. Let's give it a whirl. First Junimo Car Endless Run ever. We gotta at least beat Vincent. I mean, that should go without saying. Poor Vincent. <laughs> Alright, let's do it. I will give it my all here, I promise you that. I think we've already beaten Vincent, which is pretty sad <laughs> for, for him. At least I hope so. At least let me get through the first level. I will be mortified if I don't at least beat the first level. It, it's no, it's been known to happen. Okay, we, we made it. We made it. We got all the fruit even, so that's pretty good. It's, I mean, it's a pretty good score right there. Get an extra 5,000 for all the fruit, too. That's honestly not bad at all. Gotta be extra careful on this one. He says as he makes the crazy, insane jump. All right, that was, that was not great. Uh... So the answer was no. The answer was no. The 42% of, of doubters, you know what? You were right. You were right to doubt, I suppose. That was a, that was a foolhardy jump on my part. But you know what? Now we just now we just send it to the moon and get a world record, so it's fine. I meant on this run. I meant on this run. All right, third we we'll, we they make it very easy. I I, I see now to just like continually do these runs because they just kick you right back to the start. So I'm gonna have to be, uh, I'm gonna have to limit, limit myself. Not putting on the best performance of all time, though, that's for sure. I mean, 17,000 right out the gate was still okay. Yeah, I think, I think it was still alright. We did beat progress mode, it's true. I know I have the skills. But I'm not, like, a flawless player. I still, like, I still had many deaths in that progress mode victory, so... Let me just focus here. Let's not get too fancy with it. There's no need to go extra fast. The name of the game is Survival in Endless Mode. There we go. Gem C Giant. This is where this is where things can get very bad very quickly. <laughs> How am I supposed to get that freaking cherry? Are you kidding me? I have to plan that far ahead with my bubble jumps? I don't think so. All right, you just got you got to bait the whale into giving you the right bubbles here, okay? It's all about it's it's somewhat RNG for sure, but you can also plan a little bit ahead. All right, we got it. There's our twenty-five thousand. So we, I mean, it was two runs too late. Uh, <laughs> it's just skirting under right under that one. I didn't know I was gonna make that or not. All right, now is where things get real though. All right. <laughs> well, there's our score. We can actually check it here, right? Chloe, yeah, we got second place. Freaking Mayor Lewis. How did he? How did this man with his old arthritis-ridden thumbs get uh, get fifty thousand? There's no shot. He. That's a that's a Billy Mitchell situation right there. All right, go to sleep for the night. I think we're good. Yeah. Missed this part, start of the stream because I was making a game which was fun. <laughs> I, I appreciate that vibe. You don't always, that's not always a thing you see. Sometimes you're like, I missed the start of the stream because I was at work or I was doing homework or at school or whatever. Because you're making a game. I can respect that for sure. 
literally cheated. Yeah, exactly. I just don't believe that Mayor Lewis could do it. I, I want to see that man live in tournament, in a Junimo car tournament for real. Otherwise, like, Pixar didn't happen, basically. That's my interpretation of Tim Beaver right there. You ever played Animal Crossing? I have played a little bit of Animal Crossing here and there for sure. It's one that I don't get into as much as I would think that I would. I usually end up playing like a little bit of Animal Crossing and then kind of burning it on, burning out on it pretty quick. But maybe, maybe I just haven't had uh, the right atmosphere or the right time to play it. Because you do need to commit a significant amount of time to Animal Crossing if you want to get the most out of it. But not like, it's not one of those where you play a lot on a single day, right? Play a little bit every day, which is not the sort of play style that I'm used to. I'm more used to binging things and doing things for very long periods of time in a single setting. Animal Crossing does not uh, cater to that type of mentality. You've been watching The Price of Perfection for two in-game years based in your own Stardew file? That's kind of crazy. What's the highest year that anyone's gotten to in, like, an organic game of Stardew Valley, you think? And by organic game, I, I do mean things like challenge runs and stuff as well. I just want to discount the possibility that someone just, like, was sleeping specifically to get the highest year, or that they modded themselves to the highest year or something. I, I, I'd i like to know, like, playing through the actual game and having, like, actual real goals in mind, what's the highest that anyone's gotten to? I don't think that we're gonna sniff at that record necessarily with the price of perfection, but I'd still like to know what ballpark we'd be looking at. You can binge Animal Crossing. I mean, you can, you definitely can. There's definitely ways to go about it, to play Animal Crossing for extended periods of time. But I feel like you get the most out of it if you just do a little bit every day. That's my experience with it anyway. Your mileage may vary. You've got 10 saves, 3 perfection, none over 4 years. <laughs> Sounds about right. What year is, uh, there's the guy who's doing the 999 starting challenge where he's trying to get literally 999 of every stackable item in the game. I don't know what he, what year he's on, but he does stream over on Twitch too, so that's probably something that can be verifiably checked. But I don't know off the top of my head. He's, he's definitely further along than I am, because he's been going to that for a while. working and watching the stream. I respect it. Anyone got any people working from home or even working from work and listening to me podcast style or something like that with your uh, AirPods in or other earbud of choice? To my knowledge, he has to go above year 999. I think that is actually, yeah, that's, pre that's pretty accurate. He probably has to go well beyond that for the T set and things. Things that you can only get, like, one of a year at best. I just feel like we're, there's more we could be doing, but we know we're done. Yeah, he has to go for... He has to go very, very high into the year count, obviously, for that challenge. But I don't know what year he's currently at. Working in an office? Hell yeah, off on. Or maybe not hell yeah, depending on... What, depending on how much you like it, I suppose. But hey, work is work. You gotta do it, gotta put in those hours at some point in your life. Most of us do, anyway. Good job, Tim Beep. Working that mascot lifestyle. Does making games count as working? I would say so, yeah. I mean, definitely for uh, if you're an actual, like, uh, established game developer, but even if you're just like an aspiring indie developer, I'd say that counts as work for sure. Doing uni work, respect, respect it. You're at work writing curriculum, your boss is very chill about what you do though. Heck yeah. Glad I can be part of that experience. I can help, help make your workday a little bit more bearable.
it is always wild to me to see how many people can like listen to podcasts and YouTube videos and streams and things while they're at work. That's such a foreign concept to me because the, the jo kinds of jobs that I've always done have just been like uh, minimum wage retail jobs for the most part. And those ones you really can't, there's not a lot of wiggle room in that regard because you got to be constantly on the lookout for customers and talking to people and doing that sort of thing. There's really not a lot of downtime where you can do that sort of thing. But it's one of the benefits of, of find, finding like an office job or something a little bit more uh, where there are those a little bit more lax times. If you got the skills to land one of those kind of jobs, then I guess you reap the benefits of it too. 100%. Just looking at, out here looking for artifact spots. Someone want to drop an ornamental fan really quick in the sand? I'd be very appreciative. Hold on real quick. Hold on. What do you think is the mentality of Elliot put when he put these mushroom mushroom decals on his door? And he's just like, oh, it's fall. It's time to put my mushroom decals out. I've never seen a mushroom sticker of any kind on someone's door. Like, this is... Maybe are they real mushrooms? They are they they're like the kind of things where you like put a flower in a book and you flatten it down and you it like becomes real real flat over time. Except he did it with mush mushrooms instead. Leia probably gave them to him. I could see that they're kind of friends, aren't they? I don't know. I just don't know. I can't see what would compel a person to do that. He's just that in love with mushrooms. Maybe that's the decoration you get sent if you manage to beat Glowshroom Grotto one time, because it's just that hard. It has its own separate achievement to the rest of the game. He's saying there's a fungus among us. There's a fungus among us. You would think that with the popularity of Among Us, that the Pokemon Among Us would come up more in discourse about it, but I don't know if I've ever seen it mentioned. I'm sure it has been. I don't really frequent the Among Us circles, so it's hard for me to really say, but that seems like a no-brainer, right? That, that Pokemon should be the mascot, if anything. Mushrooms are cod cottage core. Major cozy vibes. It's true. Nothing quite says, like, mystical realm full of gnomes and elves, and also, like, cozy warm fall vibes like a like a big old springy mushroom you're gonna need the upgraded watering can for ginger island and you can buy the recipe for the totem on the island i'm with you on buying the recipe for the island warp totem that is going to be a requirement because we need to craft the uh, island warp totem eventually i don't think we need an upgraded watering can though Unless I'm completely out of my gourd. What would we need an upgrade of watering can for, may I ask? I think I think I saw... I don't know if it was you, but someone did comment that on the most recent VOD as well. Saying that we need an upgrade of watering can, but I don't know what specifically for. It'd be good to know now, for sure, if this is a new discovery that we're making, but... I think that uh, we would have... I feel like we might have even had this discussion before, because I do remember someone bringing up the watering cam in the past, but I don't entirely remember why. You can use fences to block the mole thing. That's that's the only reason I can think of that the that the watering can might be misconstrued as needed an upgrade, because there is like a mole that you have to that most people that you're supposed to hit with your watering can, I think, in order to get a golden walnut. It's like a weird little whack-a-mole game, but you can just block off all the other holes with fences. I've seen that done, so you don't need to get the upgrade one to have that extra extended range. I'm pretty sure that's how that's gonna go. You need an extended watering can for a sandworm. Watch Easy Lily's vid. To whack-a-mole situation. It, I, if if yeah, if we're thinking of the same thing, then I'm pretty sure you can just put fences over top of the po over top of each of those holes, and you can uh, lock them into a specific hole, and then we're good, right? 
By the way, I do remember we actually want to use some of this hay that Marnie sent us for tailoring purposes for uh, for a grass skirt, right? We wanted that in our fashion repertoire here. So let's do it. Make some make some lovely pants here. That's that's. Uh, I expected the grass skirt to be grass skirt to be a little longer than that. I'm not gonna lie. But there we go. We got. I mean, we'll have to dye that bikini top. That's. It's not a flattering color for, for Chloe, but <laughs> there it is, a grass skirt. We got it. You can use flooring block holes with flute blocks or pieces of path. Yeah, th I think there's different, definitely different ways to go about that. The only other thing that I could think of as far as needing the watering can on Ginger Island is to make pathways in the volcano. But I don't think you need an upgrade water and can for any situation there. I'm pretty sure it'll it'll be slower, obviously, to get through the volcano with just our basic water and can. But I don't think it's impossible by any stretch. We'll see. If we get to that point in the game, to Ginger Island, and we end up needing that upgraded water and can, we can uh, talk about that when we get there, I suppose. I'll also do a little more research, just so I am 100% confident that we're headed in the right direction there. Thanks for keeping an eye out, though. I always do appreciate, even if people are mistaken in, in their intel, I always appreciate people staying on top of possible situations that we might run into. Like that. Apparently the unupgraded water can is faster with animation cancelling. That's so funny. <laughs> That's actually really good. So, like, in a speedrun, they wouldn't upgrade the watering can until that point? Or, no, they, they must upgrade the watering can. The, the time save cannot be that good that not upgrading the watering can is the play. Because the watering can is used for so much more beyond that. There's there's no shot. Although, maybe, I guess, if you just, like, use, like, sprinklers and stuff for all your watering? I don't know. Definitely reached perfection without upgraded hoe or watering can. I'll take I'll take your word for it, Alice. I mean, I definitely this seems to be the way that we're going. The hoe definitely don't need an upgrade, and the watering can is in the same boat as far as I know right now. But the proof is in the pudding. They keep it basic. It's faster. They keep it basic for the whole run. Really, that's actually crazy. Speedrunner never upgrade watering can. Wow. I mean, that's that's enough evidence for me if, like... Well, I don't know how common perfection speedruns are. I feel like that's quite a commitment. I feel like I've only ever seen Habu planning that. And then Blade planning, like, a seated perfection speedrun. I don't know how many people actually go to it, out of their way to do that, though. Do we need Fector's Challenge for perfection? We do not, thankfully. But we're still going to do it, obviously. The challenge will not be complete until Fector's challenge has been bested. Mark my words. I wouldn't let myself re reach perfection without my purple trash can. I always forget that you can upgrade the the trash can. It's one. It was one of those later editions after I had already internalized most of my Stardew Valley knowledge. Which was prior to 1.4, so anything 1.4 or 1.5 always seems a little bit extra novel to me. Like, even Junimo Kart in its current in incarnation always seems kind of like, man, this is not how I remember Junimo Kart being. Because Junimo Kart had like a major rework in version 1.4. It was not always like this, I'm pretty sure. I think it used to be like much worse. I don't like to throw that word around lightly, but I think it was just definitively a worse version of Junimo Kart. I don't even remember exactly how it played, but... I just remember these giant slopes going like up and down and up and down all over the screen and you just kind of ride them. That's what I remember Junimo Kart as. In my mind, it was like literal just mountains going up and down and up and down. It was just endless mode? Yeah, it was like endless- it was only endless mode and it wasn't even like the same endless mode. Like, the core concept of Juno Kart was still in there, but it was not, uh, not realized nearly to its fullest potential, that's for sure.
How's the fishing life going for you? Willie, I have not picked up a fishing rod in years. That's not actually true, but not in any serious capacity anyway. Ooh, cheese. I thought that was an omel omelet, and then it was cheese cauliflower. It smells great, by the way. They just need to reassure you of that fact because we literally dug it out of a trash can. It smells great, we promise, we swear. You definitely won't get a tapeworm if you eat this. Man, just the word tapeworm makes me shudder a little bit. Just thinking of those things is freaky. I'm not going to dwell on it too much because obviously that's some heebie-jeebies right there. Funny to see Clint's upgrade menu say out of stock. <laughs> He's just, you're just done. You've upgraded everything. You worked Clint's hands to the bone. The trash adds more flavor. I mean, the saloon trash probably does. Who knows what kind of weird spices Gus is throwing out on the daily. There's a reason that Linus goes through that trash can specifically in that one part event, right? So... The saloon is the play if you're going for specifically food-related items. And then he complains about it? What, Clint? Yeah, once you upgrade all your tools, he's like, oh man. Now, now I'm not going to be able to charge you anymore. We just skip that middleman, we just don't get... We barely get any upgraded tools, and then Clint is just, uh... Just whining, but we never really listen to him anyway. We just kind of phase out all of his dialogue. Which is the way that uh, that God intended it, I think. For us to just ignore Clint. When are we getting the horror movie Duct Tape Worm? <laughs> Duct Tape Worm. That sounds like... A, it does sound like a very bad, like, B-movie. Like, B-horror movie. one of those monsters that like I would love to see it if it was uh if it was done with like practical effects or something a duct tapeworm but if it was like a CGI tapeworm I'd be <laughs> I don't know I don't know I don't think I don't think that kind of movie would have any kind of crazy Michael Bay-esque budget Did I do... I did not do exclamation point more trash today. I need to make sure to stay on top of that. We got our extra little bet going off on going on the side here, so... I'm gonna make sure that I'm uh, being diligent about this. It's so crazy how fast the weather changes around here. Like literally like a couple days ago, I was in the middle of a freaking blizzard. I would I would look outside and I could not see more than like two feet past my window. And now it's like the nicest, sunniest, most beautiful day of all time out there. It's a common saying around here and I think it's common in like most places of the world. If you don't like the weather, wait 10 minutes. For a long time, I thought that was just like a quirky little saying we had around here, but then you see it online and you realize, oh, people say that like all over the place because weather is actually just like, it's just, it changes everywhere basically. Some places are much more consistent than others. But I think the general experience with weather and the fact that it's like such a ubiquitous colloquial thing makes it very easy to talk about, obviously. Nice here, but windy. It gets so freaking windy up here. You can barely go like a day or two without hearing those nasty howls outside. It sounds like a freaking banshee is screaming outside your window. I feel you on that one for sure. This is not where our hardwood goes. It is where our maki rolls go though. No, it's not. Never mind. They go, they go down my gullet. They don't. They Chloe, happy. Have a good breakfast. There we go. It snowed super hard in Calgary for a day, and now that now it's almost all melted. 
I'm not I'm not so far removed from Calgary that uh like I I experience relative same relatively the same weather patterns. I mean I am in that southern Alberta region, so I don't know how widespread that snowstorm was, but it definitely hit us pretty hard. It was like weird snow though. Like I had to like shovel some of the snow outside of my place of work. And it was all just like dense with water. It was basically just like straight slush already. And it was, it hadn't had any chance to even like melt that much yet. It just like came down that way. It was so weird. It's the kind of snow that you'd try to make a snowman out of maybe. Because you do need like pretty like moist, dense snow in order to make a snowman. That's a blueberry tart, by the way. Two days in a row of food from the saloon. Man, Gus is just making too many extra batches of food, I suppose. Wasteful. So wasteful, man. Up by the Calgary airport, it was almost up to a foot. That's actually nuts. It didn't get nearly that bad at where I'm at, but... I did hear tell of that through the grapevine, through the grapevine, through customers and stuff at my at my other job. Explain Stardew Valley lore. Uh, you got these like uh little things called Junimos. They're forest spirits, and uh, they control everything. The end. Everything can be traced back to Junimos, and uh, Junimos can be traced back to Yoba. That's all you need to know. That's this. That's the entire Stardew Valley lore condensed into a single breath. People might tell you, "What about uh, what about the wizard and his connection to Abigail? What about all the different monsters in the mines? What about Leo? What about uh, Lewis and Marnie?" Don't worry about that. It's all Junimos. Always has been. Always will be. They might put on a, a cute little front, those little apple-looking suckers, but we all know. We all know that Junimos are hiding dark secrets. It's a matter of who's going to get to the bottom of that mystery first. I am not a Stardew... Train! I'm not a Stardew Valley lore aficionado. I'm not an expert in that field. I probably know more about the, the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's than I do about uh, Stardew Valley, despite having never played a Stardew, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's game outside of Ultimate Custom Night. But Stardew Valley, I just have different priorities when I play it. I'm not super invested in the lore. Is this a Qbert reference? Disc. And then there's like the Qbert plat... That's... That's gotta be what that is, right? There's no other way. What does disc mean, though? Is it because it's like on a disc? Like a... Like a floppy disc type thing? A lot of passenger cars? I live for the graffiti, though. Ooh, this could drop something good. All right, all right. That's some. That's not bad. Uh, sir, don't look at me with those beady little eyes. This man looks hungry. That's a face that conveys pure and utter, just absolute gluttony to me. Despite even like without his extra body, he's just man. Dude needs a midnight snack. Wombus? Is that Wombus? There's no way. That's a. That's a. It's an artistic rendition of Wombus if I've ever seen it. Nothing quite like the Feast of Wild Mushrooms in the fall. You think Linus has ever thought about just like hopping on a train and going somewhere else? Do a little hitchhiking? It's Wombus? That's not Wombus, chat. That's not, it's not Wombus. It's Wombus' older, older brother Grungus. Lewis was never in Marnie's room. The Junmos just took his shorts. I'd believe it. They're actually just like little gremlins. They want you to believe that Stardew Valley is this deep, complex, mystical ecosystem, when re in reality, they're just like a bunch of puppeteers pulling the strings in the background. And all of this is just a, a charade. There's not even any real magic in the game. You think that's how Linus got here? He jumped on a train to Stardew Valley? I could believe that, honestly. 
I don't know if Linus ever tells us about how he ended up in Stardew Valley, but didn't he say, he says at one point that one of the reasons he stayed in Stardew Valley is because of the vast library. And that's just like not true, my dude. You never go to the library. He's always like, oh, I love a good book, but I've never seen that man pick up a book in his life. Do you think he's just like, let, like leading us on because he doesn't want us to know that he's illiterate? No shame in it, Linus, honestly. Like, there are some people who have accomplished some very amazing things out there despite not being able to read or not being able to read that well. I believe in you, Linus. You don't have to put on a front for me, dude. We like you for who you are, Linus. Linus is... He doesn't have to be anything more than he what he is. He's just Linus, and that's good enough. Is it alright if I post my games in the Discord? The games that you've made, Vibe? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be willing to look at them, for sure. And, and if so, which channel? Uh, probably, like... I guess that would be like uh like an art and media situation. Would be the way that I would imagine it going. Pardon me, by the way, there was like a burp like halfway through that uh, that sentence. I just didn't acknowledge it. Thank you very much to Lay Coon as well for uh, becoming a YouTube member, joining the Electron Cheer. I greatly appreciate it. The support is amazing, as always. I will never, never get, uh, never get used to it. Never get used to the generosity of all the people out there. Enjoy your emotes and your sword. Thank you so much. All right, we do also have the Stardew Valley Fair coming up tomorrow. That's fair, Hardy Har Har. Last year, if you weren't here for the Stardew Valley Fair last time, chat had an amazing performance. They selected some of the best items that we had on hand and scored 94 points, netting us a first place victory. It was a beautiful situation. I was I was flabbergasted, but there is room for improvement. You can get scores above 100 up to like I think uh 124 is about the max score you can get at the Stardew Valley Fair range display. So, as we always do, when we get to the Stardew Valley Fair, it's going to be a fun time. I'm going to go through my chests at home, and all of you in chat will p just type items madly, whatever item you want to put in the Grange display, and I will uh, pick them at random as I look over at chat. And whatever collection we of nine items that we end up with, they all have to be unique items and preferably no duplicates from previous years, but we're getting to a point where that's going to be a, lot, a little bit harder. But once we do get, once we have nine items, those are the nine that we go with, and we see whether we can trounce last year's score or not. We're on a winning streak. We've always gotten a better score year over year over year for the three years that we've been doing this. However, 94 is a hell of a score to beat. 94 is absolutely, like, monstrous. I don't know if I could concoct a better score than that. Well, while picking the items carefully myself. I don't I just don't know if it's within our power, but chat, you've you've done some magical things in the past. I believe in you. You may say I'm a fool, feeling the way that I do. You can call me Pollyanna, say I'm crazy as a loon, but I believe in silver linings, and that's why I believe in you. It's a song that I live my life by. Alright. Well, that's it for the day. So, we do we do need to think of, okay, because tomorrow's the fair. So what are our stakes on this? Because we've always also had stakes every year that if chat doesn't beat the score, then something happens. Or if they do beat the score, then something happens. I think a positive reinforcement is the way to go. Because last time we did, uh, we, we had Dino Chloe as our incentive. Should we go for a different outfit that we could uh, that we could wear for a little bit, or should we branch out to some other avenue for rewards? What what would chat like to see as a reward for beating last year's Grange display? It has to be something bombastic because obviously we've done here. I'll just I'll just stand around and let the let the leaves blow. It has to be something bombastic because 94 is a heck of a score to beat. You buy the lucky bow. We can't go that far. We can't jeopardize aspects of the challenge. 
for a little side bet like this. Farmer Chloe needs to make a comeback. You want to just go back to like default Chloe for a little bit. OG Chloe. If we win, Timby gets a big playground slash house. That could be a fun one. Buy the bus ticket. Not happening. <laughs> I appreciate the, the suggestion though. We change out of the trash garb. I'm willing to put another outfit on the line. What do we what do we want for uh for an outfit though if we do happen to win? What's a good incentive here? Like we got our old coffee outfit, the flannel shirt and the fedora and all that. We got the green tunic is where it all started. We do have the uh we have the bikini top and the grass skirt that we could go with and do, do a little do a little cosplay that way. Build a Tim B playground. Think eating the legend is a great incentive? I mean, some people definitely don't want that to happen, so some people would absolutely just try to bomb the Grange display. The seaweed and the grass and the grass. That's, I mean, that is the ultimate fan service, right? Except to see, expect to see a meme about Stardew Valley lore someday. I would have it no other way, Snatcher. When did we get the pink top? Which is the pink top? Is it this one here? Or is it some, somewhere else? We got a Bobo shirt. All, all these trash can hats. This is actually crazy. You know what? I think I think we'll we'll do an outfit. We'll do an outfit change for uh, for a reward. So if you'd like to see Chloe change out of this outfit, then you you are incentivized to do well. We'll change out of the outfit for the rest of the stream and probably next stream as well. What that outfit will be will be decided post victory. I think. Because I got to decide the outfit for the last one where we did Dino Chloe, and that was a fun time. But if you want to have your voice heard and want this to be a more custom outfit, then this is your chance. And we're not limited to specifically these options. If there's something you want us to tailor, then we can also do that. It's going to have to be a, a collective effort by chat, which kind of falls in line with just the Grange display as a whole. We'll see. We'll see if we get there or not. I don't know enough about this game to suggest anything. It's all right, Alexander. It's every suggestion is valid, and if you just want to see something in the Grange display when you look in a chest, if you just even if you don't know what the item is, just try and point it out as best you can, and and we'll do it. You still say the hair bone should be the new lucky bow. Nothing will ever surpass the lucky bow for me, but the hair bone is definitely a good. Uh, it's a good headpiece. I can't even deny that. Taylor an owl. I don't think that's possible, but I can certainly give it a try. All right, go to sleep for the night. Let's do it. We shall see. There is a reward in store. There might even be more. I do have an idea for something we could do if uh, it, it's something I'll keep secret for the time being. But sometimes, honestly, the best the best incentive to do well is just the the fact that you've done well. So chat. We don't really have too many chores to do. We can't do we can't do our garbage picking until after the Stardew Valley Fair is done and over with. Because we don't have access to the town, so we'll have to we'll have to remember to do that after the fair. We always do, but we we just in case, in case something goes absolutely horribly wrong, make sure to remind me once the fair is over to do garbage. Now let me do a quick scout, just to make sure. I'll get my coffee down. A little water Timbeeb. We don't really have any other chores to do otherwise, because we're not worried about the greenhouse right now. I do see a little piece of seaweed down here. I don't even know what the heck this statue is. Is that Hatmouse's weird cousin? Nobody knows. That's the true secret hidden Stardew Valley lore. What are the warp statues supposed to be? Thank you, Koji. I'm glad that you're able to make the stream. Happy to hear you enjoy the content. All right. Now is the moment of truth. Chat, I'm going to pick a chest, and once I open a chest, 
just start screaming items at me. Start screaming items. We need nine items. We need to fill the rest of these slots. Starting with... Dun 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 We're going this dish chest. This chest right here. Just start screaming whatever item you see that you think would be a good addition to the Grange display. Remember, we're trying to beat 94 points. 94. What are the factors that go into points for the Grange display? It's diff different categories of items. It's the different qualities of items. How, like illustrious those items are there's a whole swath of a big point system and if you're familiar with it then you probably know the ways to go here let me see what do we got in here i see spicy eel spicy eel do we have a spicy eel in here that is we do have a spicy eel okay all right that's done that's done now we move right along we're gonna go inside here throw you off a little bit throw you off the scent what do we want out of this what do we want out of here this i mean it's not the best options in the world now that i'm looking at it but you got to make make do with what you got. You got to make do with what you got. There is a spicy eel in here as well. Chocolate cake. Chocolate cake is not in this chest anymore. So that's a tea leaves. I see tea leaves. That's a vegetable right there. That's two distinct categories. So we're we're cruising already. Now we go out here. We go out here. You know, we go to the greenhouse. We go all the way to the greenhouse and we go in here because there is a little hidden chest in here. And there's actually some extra stuff in here this time. So you know what? Maybe maybe there's something extra special in here. It's hidden way off on the side. I think there's I think there's a chance. That's me. That's me. Flounder. Flounder poppy seed muffin. What else you got for me? First one I see. Cake. Flounder. Dark blue jazz. You gotta be more specific. There's many dark blue jazzes here. It's it's we gotta you gotta choose a quality. Gold ancient fruit. Gold ancient fruit. Gold quality ancient fruit. Alright, we got it. Uh we're moving right along here. We're moving right along. You do a little skirt right over to here. Just kidding. There's only like one thing in there. That would not be fair. <laughs> We'll go over here instead, though. What do you got out of here? What do you got for me, chat? I just see corn, dark blue, gold jazz, ancient for gold, ancient fruit. Chat, chat, you gotta be faster. You gotta be quick with it. You gotta be... Let's go, let's go. Lightest color, gold, blue jazz, gold, ancient fruit, gold, apricot. All right. This is, the, this is the slowest we've seen chat on the Grange display, honestly. This is maybe your chance to get in. I don't know how many people we got in chat here, but if you've ever uh, had your suggestion quashed before... Now is your now is your chance. Now is your absolute best chance to make this happen. What do we got in here? No prismatic shard this year, so I mean we can't even uh, can't rely on that, that. Can't fall back on that one. The shorts we veto. The ve shorts are a veto option. We can't pick that because it has a unique interaction. Uh, crimson fish. Crimson fish. I saw. All right. Crimson fish. We'll take. Now we go over to here. The mines chest. We don't have anything from any of these categories yet. I'm pretty sure. So this is a, this is a good opportunity to expand our horizons. Expand our horizons. I see squid. I see prismatic. Nope, nope. I'm gonna look look away from chat for a little bit. Just look outside my nice window. Why does my neighbor have a snowflake in their window, like a little snowflake ornamental decoration? Do they know that it's freaking April? What the heck is that? All right. Uh, diamond. I just see diamond. That's the first one I saw. I promise. I'm not even joking with you. All right, now we go over here. What else you got? What else you got for me, chat? Hit me with it. Hit me with your best shot. Fire away. We got a lot of crops in here. We already do have some other crops, so this is maybe not going to be our best uh, our best shot at this. Iridium bar. Lava quartz. Lava quartz is a new one on me. I ain't never seen a lava quartz before. Look at Timbu. He's hiding over here in the grass. He's actually utilizing his grass patch to his uh, advantage. Gold star corn. Gold star corn. We can make that happen. All right, uh, let's go back into... Oh, gosh, we got two more things to get. Uh, oh, we have not done this chest before. Here we go. Here we go. This is the real moneymaker. What do you got for me here? We got... Some, there's some There's some interesting options in here. Uh, choose wisely. It's a little bit of yikes. Gold pumpkin, gold pumpkin. I'm too much of a perfectionist to even consider most of the items you're suggesting. <laughs> this is, I mean... We gotta do what we gotta do. We gotta do what chat will say. Man, the people love this chest. I see it's a Nautilus shell. A Nautilus shell? There it is. I don't even know if this is an ancient shell. It's not any kind of category. I don't know if we can actually put that in the Grange display, but we're gonna roll with it. Last, but certainly not least, um, we haven't done this chest yet. What do we got in here? I am awaiting Iridium Carp. Iridium Carp. It's too late. It's too late. We've moved on from the Iridium Carp. It's not... Not an option anymore. Now you just have to look at these beautiful flowers, the mushrooms. There's wood. There's there's plenty of cool things in here. But are any of them good enough? What do you got for me? Purple, gold star, purple mushroom. Gold star, purple mushroom. That's the first one I saw. 
We got our collection here. Timbeeb. Godspeed. Protect the farm while I'm gone. That was good, chat. That was good. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything. I don't I don't know. I don't have the formulas for the Stardew Valley range display points locked into my brain 24-7. So it's hard to say where exactly our range display is going to land this year. This one was so rigged. What are you talking about? I did the exact same thing I do every year. 24 mixed seeds, by the way. Kind of a good incentive. I did the exact same thing. Honestly, put away tools. Why would I put away the tools? I mean, we got we got room. We got all all nine slots here, right? We're good. We're good. All right. Now comes the most important part: is actually setting up the Grange display. So, color coordination is key here. We got the two reds. You got a purple here. You got yellows. You got your blues. You got like we got like three yellowish ones, but this is kind of yellow red, so it's a good transition point maybe. What if we do? Something like this. Start like start like so, and then we transition into the into the reds a little bit. Like that. And then we kind of have the blue-green intersection. With a little purple right down the center. You know, oh no, purple is perfect right in the middle there. The, the tea leaves kind of throw things off a little bit here. Because they're not uh, blue or anything, but they, it's a good it's a good blending of colors right here. I vote to replace the ancient fruit with a coffee. We do have coffee here. I mean, it's it's more potent than regular coffee, but I would I cannot be smirched the good name of chat like that by uh by having a third party write in vote for for triple shot espresso. Swap the tea leaves and the eel. I think that actually works. Yeah, I think that's a good that's a good switch right there because you got the greens of the corn and the tea leaves there and the reds are still potent here. I think this is good. I think this is good. I'm happy with this. But are you happy with it? That's what you're going to find out now. Will we get 95 points or more with this display? That's the benchmark we need to clear. It's it's a lofty goal. Do you believe that you've done it, chat? Do you think that this collection of lovely items from our farm has the potential to go the distance? What do you think? I don't want to say a word because I don't want to influence the vote. I have thoughts. You probably a lot of you probably have those same thoughts. Really cute Grange display, TBH. Honestly, like I'm, I'm kind of with you on that one. This might be, be one of the most aesthetically pleasing Grange displays that we've had. It's unique, for sure. Whether it's unique in a good way or a bad way is uh, unclear as of this moment. You think it wins, at least? Win is, what, 90 points or higher? Current Chat currently thinks 56% of people do believe that this Grange display can go the distance. Let's go talk to our competitors, see what they think. I tried my best, but my display is pretty weak compared to Pierre's. I mean, don't don't count yourself down and out yet. Maybe the judges will give me bonus points for the massive cheese wheel. I mean, Lewis is a massive cheese himself, so he might feel some camaraderie there. My store carries the very finest quality products in the whole valley. Please inspect my Grange display closely and see for yourself. Hmm, I don't know. If you, like, zoom in really close, you might see that there's a little... Little bruise on the blueberries here. These are some freaking enormous blueberries, by the way. Pierre is very serious about his Grange display. He's been setting aside his best-looking produce for weeks in preparation. That means some of it's probably, like, nasty and, like, mushy by now. If it's been set aside for weeks. No shot those tomatoes are lasting weeks. I'm telling you. What do you got, Willie? Setting up a Grange display, Chloe. It's your chance to show off all the good produce from Frugal Farm. Yeah, it, all only the best produce. All of this handmade, handpicked on on Frugal Farm. A lot of that's actually true, but what about you, Simon? Simon does not look impressed. What about Abigail? I already beat all the games. Now what? Same. That's how I felt after I beat Junimo Kart. Have you ever been to the fortune teller? She set up a stand in the graveyard. I so wish I could get out of our fortune red at some point, but. Wellwick is too much of a charlatan, unfortunately. 
A hundred gold for a fortune. No capital thanks. Get me out of here. All right. Honestly, like, if Clint set up this Grange display up there, I think he'd uh, win by intimidation factor alone. I really admire Robin's carpentry skills. I use a lot of the same techniques in my own line of work. I always, like... I think I think Leia and, and Robin could have, like, a good master-slash-apprentice relationship. That would be kind of a cool thing to see. At any rate, I've led you all on long enough. Let's see what the strongman thinks. Are you strong like me? Let's find out. Ooh, so close. Strength of a gorilla. We know we can do better than that, but... Let's see if we can do better than that as far as our aesthetic choices for a range display. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll right now while I'm thinking about it. 60% 60 60 of people, not an overwhelming majority, but still the, still the majority of people, do believe that this Grange display will beat last year's. I don't know. It's it's. There's a good variety here. There's a good amount of quality. But I don't know if it's going to go the distance. I feel like we probably will win. I just don't know if it's going to be enough of a victory. Going to bet it all on orange? You know it, Eric. You know it. Eventually, anyway. The stabby display. Your Grange display has been judged. Always get those little butterflies in my stomach. I didn't win. Don't, don't spoil it! Don't spoil it, Marnie! Alright, what do we got? Moment of truth, chat. Moment of truth. Cross your fingers. Close your eyes. Congratulations. You won first with a rate of 93. 93 points, chat. You were so close. It almost could not have been any closer. 93 points. Holy crap. By the skin of your teeth. That's like the that's a moment where it's like at the end of a movie where they're like reaching up and they're about to grab onto like the edge of the cliff. They're almost there. They're almost there. And then they just fall a little bit short and just Oh, you blame the tea leaves. We did still win. First place with a score of 93. It's nothing to sneeze at. 93 is a fantastic score. Unfortunately, it's not good enough, so uh, we will not have an outfit change, no new fashion, no new drip today, but it's all right. We've come this far with the garbage outfit. I think it would be in our best interest to keep it on regardless for the future. Maybe it's not the most lucky thing in the world, but the leprechaun shoes add a certain je ne sais quoi, so we at least have that going for us. Well, we'll grab everything... Well, you know what? Hold on. Do we buy anything now is the question. Do we buy anything and everything, or do we bet everything on orange? Dude is tapping his foot. He's waiting for us. He knows that it's time. Let's do it. Uh, we're, we'll do one green. I'm going to bet everything on green. And then we'll, we'll just see how far we can take this, right? Green, we went all in on orange last time. I'm pretty sure it just, like, screwed us completely. Let's see if green is uh, our moneymaker today. All right, so that's to be expected. 2,000 tokens. Now we go all in on green again. We go for these big swings now. I'm tired of doing the little pussyfoot thing where you just like, bet 50% of your earnings. Go big or go home as far as I'm concerned. Look, it's paying off pretty big dividends right now. Now we got to go all in on green again. I want our max bet. Excuse me? Oh, I, I put in 8,000 because that's how many we're going to win right now. I got, I got a little ahead of myself. I'm sorry. 75% chance. Still coming through in the clutch. Man, this green, this is... <laughs> it really does feel like cheating. All right, but now you go all in on orange. This is how you make your fi your final tokens here. You got to go for the underdog approach. Told you. 
Sometimes you just know. If you know, you know. We did three in a row of green and then one of orange. That's that's literally perfect odds. Freaking nailed it. Wasn't even a doubt in my mind. I 0% concern, okay? 0% concern. I can't believe that worked. No way, no way. Chat, ye of little faith. Ye of little faith. Alright, we're going to buy another light green rug. We're going to buy some dried sunflowers. We'll buy 24 mixed seeds. And, uh... We already... I don't want to besmirch our scarecrow, or our rare crow that we already have by getting a second one of him. I think having a unique one is is a more important factor. I'll pick up another fedora, though. A little, a little urchin-clad fedora. So, we obviously don't have enough room to... Wait, you can put these things in the Grange display? What? <laughs> I didn't know you could put furniture in the Grange display. That's actually crazy. Something to consider for next year? <laughs> Just have a whole living room in our Grange display? That's kind of wild, honestly. Um, Alright, so what do we do here? We go ahead, we don't... What are we keeping out of this? We want to keep the Crimson Fish, obviously. That's a big one. Uh, I'd like to keep the Diamond, probably. We'll keep the corn. We'll keep a purple mushroom. The rest of this, we can leave it here, and if I'm... If my sources are correct, it actually does come... It does get put at, like, Lewis's house or something. Anything that we don't take here. If you leave it behind, it will be in the lost and found. Okay. So, we'll just leave that for now. None of this, even if we do lose out on it, is going to be that big of a deal. Trading your tokens for prizes. I mean, we have so many tokens now, we might as well just see how far we can push this, right? Like, how how long can we go before we go bankrupt on this? We're going green again, because we already beat it on the orange. We, we went all in on those odds. Just let her rip, kid. Let her rip. How many in a row do you think we can get? This is what? This is five in a row? Five full odds things in a row here. We're going to go green again. I'm no fool. 9999. Nine, nine, nine. Place your bets now. How long do you think we can go before we bust on this? Does Argon have a gambling problem? What, what makes you say that? You just got to play the odds. They say 75% green, so you go green three times in a row. And then you go orange. It's just the way it goes. We've done six so far. Frick, honestly, honestly, I should have gone with my gut on that one. My gut was telling me orange on that one. You won't believe me now that it's already come to pass. I should have said it beforehand, but I know in my heart of hearts that is true. Six in a row ain't bad, though. Oh, the fallacy. All right. Little burger. Little burger for good luck on our cactus root hunt tonight. And we're on our way. Argon's game. We're, uh, yeah, we're all addicted to gambling here. If you're playing the bingo card at home, you're just as bad as me, if not worse. Leave the Stardew Valley Fair? Yes, we will. All right. Now, we go ahead and deposit our goods. Real quick, I'll put this fedora away. I just want some room for for things. Uh, just throw this here for right now. We'll we'll move. We'll sort that out later. As long as we have a couple inventory slots to welcome the cactus fruit with open arms, we'll be good. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time for a crystallarium run. We should. I mean. It's not that late. It's not uh, Spirit's Eve out here where we get home at midnight. So we probably will have enough time to just make it to the Crystallariums, right? We're not going to do a beach run today today for Artifacts boss for obvious reasons. Yeah, there's a bingo card on the Discord if you'd like to partake. It is, uh, it is an option that's available. Need room for the Cactus Fruit? What the heck was that? I heard a, I heard a bush rustle, and then I look over, and there's nothing there. I was looking over a chat, and I missed it. Haley just says sigh. She was really looking forward to that Grange display victory, too. It's It was so close. I didn't realize it would be that close, honestly. 
Like it, real talk, I honest, I didn't think that we were gonna get anywhere near ninety four points on that. I didn't. I guess I misunderestimated the the value of some of those things in there. It didn't seem like it was that gonna be that great of a Grange display, but you guys pulled it out in the end. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even mad. Hey, Clover Quartz, welcome to the Neutron tier. Thank you for becoming a YouTube member. I greatly appreciate it. You didn't have to do that, so the fact that you did, it uh, puts a smile on my face and warm fuzzies in my heart. Enjoy your emotes and your sword. Careful where you swing that thing. Your husband make that makes that noise and you hate it. Haley's sigh. Like the... Uh, something like that. Just the very over-exaggerated sigh. Like, oh... Just, oh... All right. Exclamation point, more trash. Throw that one in there real quick. I, you think I need more crystallariums? <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, Madeline. I'm definitely with you on that one. All right, uh, let's sort everything out here as much as we can. Crimson fish goes in here. These go over here. Old star, old star mushroom. Diamond goes in here. An ancient fruit goes way over at the greenhouse. Welcome back, All Star Gaming. Put that away. And we got just a little bit of time left to. I don't know if having like a carpet in a kitchen is like blasphemous in any capacity, but this kind of feels like nice and nice and homey here. And a little bit of sunflowers. Uh. Just one in every corner of our room. We'll, we'll get there eventually. Tim Beeb's on the bed! Tim Beeb's on the bed! That's so precious. I always love to see that. Good night, Tim Beeb. Watched and loved all the VODs. So glad I can catch some of the streams now, work permitting. Happy to have you here, Clover. Obviously, work must come first most of the time, but uh, whenever you get the chance, you're always welcome here. Some items were placed in the town lost and found. I was so jump scared by that message. I was like, what did I do wrong? Did it, is it like the cactus fruit has been deleted from the game? I was so afraid for a second. But it's just the lost and found, which I'm assuming is at Mayor Lewis's house. I've never partaken in the lost and found in this game. So if, if you have, then please guide me. But Mayor Lewis's house would make the most sense to me. Either that or the Adventurer's Guild, because they have the item recovery service. But I think those are two distinct things. Can't wait to see your Skull Caverns runs. You and me both, to be perfectly honest. I am no Skull Caverns expert. I haven't touched the Skull Caverns since literally like my first playthrough of Stardew Valley. It's been so long. I've seen enough videos to know generally how it goes. You got your explosive ammo and you got all these various different things. You're looking for shafts at all times. But we're gonna we're gonna have a staircase meta going for us for sure. Like when we're doing the Skull Caverns, I guess we actually don't want shafts, do we? Because we don't want to skip floors. Every floor has a chance... Every floor, floor past 10 has a chance to be a treasure room. So shafts are not going to be the meta for our Skull Cavern runs. I just I just thought about that just now. Didn't even realize it. But that should be... That, that checks out in my head. Very, very interesting. A rug in the kitchen is fine, but installed a carpet, not so much. Yeah, I feel like I've seen rugs in kitchens, but never like a... Most most kitchen, kitchens will have some kind of ceramic or linoleum tile, in my experience. Never a carpet. That's, I feel like that's just a, asking for trouble. That's got to be some kind of fire hazard or mildew spawning thing. <laughs> Couldn't think of a good word for it. Where'd this cookie come from? Oh, that was last night. We didn't have room for an inventory. All right, swing by Mayor Lewis's really quick. It's locked, by the way. Just kidding. Now it's unlocked. It's 8.30, but we, we were just a little bit too early. It's like those people that show up to a store fought like two minutes before it opens. They, like, press their face up to the window, look inside to see if anyone's there, and then uh, despite 
the fact that they can see the sign that has the hours on it that tells you it's going to open in two minutes, and, there's, and you can probably see people moving around inside. They just don't have that kind of patience, and they leave. It's such a weird phenomenon. Like, I just, like, stand out there for two minutes. It's no big deal. But some people just don't have that kind of time, apparently. They'd rather go to an entirely different store and waste even more time. All right, we'll go get we'll go finish our trash run, then we'll stop by the Lost and Found, sort out our business there. Bob's your uncle. Rugs and bathrooms are illegal in some states if if you're renting the house out. Really? Like rugs or carpet? Carpet I could get. Carpet in a bathroom sounds absolutely nasty. But a rug, like what about like a bath mat? I guess that's not the same as a rug, but it has a similar function. Well, not really, I guess. Bath mat is more designed for to be in a bathroom, whereas a rug is more designed for comfort. Yeah, bath mats have to be an exception to that rule, I would, I would imagine. A little lost and found. Uh, collect lost and found items and incomplete deliveries. Grab this, grab this, grab this. We got it toss something here. I'm going to say it's probably the broken CD. And get our spicy eel. Good as new. I've never checked out Mayor Lewis's house all that much, honestly. Pelican Town marriage log. After marriage, you may file for divorce here. Let's hope that isn't necessary. You're telling me, mister. Ledger book? This is where you, the, like, merge funds in multiplayer? What else you got here? Mayor's oven could use a good cleaning. Oof. Roasting Lewis for his dirty oven i mean who real who really cleans their oven all that often though it's one of the last things i always think about koji thank you for becoming a youtube member welcome welcome to the electron tier i greatly appreciate it enjoy your emotes and your sword a traditional tea setting the mayor must be pretty serious about tea he's got the cushions and everything on the ground here you see this man goes hard on his tea it's the mayor's fridge it's mostly full of milk and iced Iced tea? Milk and iced tea. The two most important food groups. What else you got for me, buddy? I can't even turn on his fireplace. Nothing? Nothing of interest? What about here? Won't you come by tomorrow night? If you come through the back window, no one will notice. I'd like to see you more often. I know you're busy, but you can't make time for me. I hope to see you tomorrow, M. What? This exists! I'm just I'm just randomly snooping around the mayor's room and we find a note from M. Obviously stands for Marlin. What the heck? Hold <laughs> I didn't know this was a real thing. I've never seen anyone talk about this. Does it did anybody else know about this? Or just is is am I the only one discovering for this for the first time? Oh man. If you come through the back window, no one will notice. Is that how the shorts got there? True lore? This might be a little private. I mean, he doesn't have to know any different. Chloe doesn't talk. M's for Morris. M doesn't mess around. I mean, we all know, like, the there's, there's a thing going on between Marty and Lewis, sure, but I've never seen that, that letter there. I gotta do more snooping. I gotta, I gotta snoop around more NPC rooms. Speaking of. Oh, hi. I, was, I wasn't going to do anything untoward. Never. What's this? Super Fashion Girl Magazine? That's probably Emily's, if I, if I had to guess. What do we got? Flailing with Purpose, a modern approach to the art of dance. It's a globe. Hey, there's Stardew Valley. I never snoop around the villagers' rooms. It just feels wrong somehow. We can't. I, uh, like, I can't, right? Just immediately after watching her leave, there's... I uh, know, we're better than this. We're better than this. Argon goes full stalker mode. Yeah, we're not doing it. You have to? No, this... If 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 I became her girlfriend, there's a there's a chance that I that we could just like spend some time in there and get to know the place a little better, but it's too personal. We're not doing it. 
There's some funny stuff on the Joe Mark shelves if you haven't looked. That's the that's the origin story of stomach bag right there. And what an origin story it was. All right, um, Nautilus shell. I don't even remember. I think it was in here. No, it was it was over in this chest actually, but there's more of them in there. It's not you, it's Chloe, and she's weird. Excuse me? Pink Panther? <laughs> you got something to say to Chloe? You can say it to her face. She is kind of weird, though. And she flexes it, so. Alright, put away this. Uh, tea leaves go inside. Imagine villagers snooping around your room. They're welcome to it. We got no secrets to hide. We got no skeletons in our closet, right? Anyway. <laughs> Off we go to sleep for the night. Yeah, we did everything. We did our garbage collection. We got the lost and found. We're good. She is wearing garbage clothes. That's how you know she has nothing, no shame left. Chloe literally walks around every single day wearing a real garbage can. She's at her wit's end. It's not a closet, you're fine. I mean, any room's a closet if you want it to be. It's just a matter of how you use it. That's actually a good question. Is a closet defined by, like, the size of the room or what you use it for? Because Could you turn a kitchen into a closet? If it was, like, a closed-off space? I don't know. Although, I guess most kitchens are not really closed off. Most kitchens are at least connected to, like, a dining room or something. I love how the, the chat is slowly becoming a cult of cactus fruit and weird traditions. You gotta do something to stay entertained during these long grinds, right? It's like a road trip. I don't know. Who's, who's on the road trip? I hope I'm still entertaining you. Um... But on, like, a road trip, you gotta bring along... Sometimes you bring along little games or little books to read or something, and those can serve well, but if you forget that, you gotta... You gotta come up with ideas, like, weird little things to entertain yourself. That's how Punch Buggy became a thing. Punch Buggy, no punchback. Rich people have huge closets, it's true. Big ol' walk-in closet. My best friend has a whole bedroom closet, so I think that's how you designate it. Just turn your bedroom into an actual closet. Sam has really grown up since I left. He's a man now. I wish I could have been there for him. Bro, you've been here with him for the past four years since you got back. Like four and a half years, even. If that's not enough time to at least rekindle some kind of relationship, I think it's on you. We both become cactus fruit. I I am become cactus fruit, destroyer of uh, Stardew Valley challenges. Need bok choy for a project I'm working on? Do you think it's the same one that he needed the cactus fruit for? Is Sam actually me? Hold on, because I also need bok choy for a project I'm working on. Bok choy is one of our exclamation point treasure seeds. That's kind of suspicious, Sam. I don't know, buddy. I talked about it briefly earlier. Is there any actual, like, lore as to why these statues are what they are? Like, why is this statue of an owl, or what is this? Is this, like, a, a woodpecker or some kind of weird penguin? Could not tell you. That's a dried starfish. Those must be a lot more common than I thought they were. S Sam is plotting to steal Chloe's identity. That's Samson for you. I almost had my identity stolen one time, like in real life. It was, uh, I mean, I don't know how close it was to actually happening. It was, I think I like dodged a, a bullet pretty well. Basically what happened is I was on a, on a train. It was like on, a, on one of the sea trains that goes through Cal Calgary when I was visiting the city. And my wallet, it was, it was in a, like a kind of a loose pocket on my coat that I was wearing. And it either fell out, or someone pickpocketed it, or something, and I lost my wallet. And then I was, like, panicking after that, obviously, and I went through all the process of getting the cards replaced, and yada yada. If you've ever lost a wallet or something, it, you know how it is. 
then literally like four months later, I get a call from a police department in a town in like northern Alberta that I've never heard of before. And they're like, hey, are you uh, so-and-so? And I'm like, yeah, that's me. That's my name. And they're like, we found your... We, f we found your information as part of an identity theft ring that we just busted. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I'm like, all right, thanks, I guess. Oh, geez. Oh, we're like perfectly on time for the crystallariums here. It was like, man, I was like this close to being part of the plot of some kind of crazy action heist movie. Like, they called it an identity theft ring, and I was like, those exist? <laughs> That's not just a fabrication. I thought identity theft was just like a guy like going around and doing it on his own, but like there's a whole ring to it. It's a it's an operation. It was a little scary for sure. I mean, I ne nothing ever came of that. I never saw any like fraudulent charges on credit cards or anything like that. Nothing that I know came of it. So, we're chilling. Unless I'm the thief of the identity. You would never know, would you? I just happen to have a voice that sounds very similar to Argon Matrix before he had his identity stolen, and now we're living in a post-Argon world. Hello, illegal immigrant. Sounds like something out of a fanfic. Honestly, it kind of it kind of felt like that when it happened. It was just uh it was a very weird and surreal experience getting that phone call. What will you use the jade for? Exclamation point FAQ. For all the answers to your uh, prize of perfection related questions. And away we go. Identity theft organized crime leader Sam. I don't think Sam has it in him. Sam can't even wake up at the same time every day. You think he's organizing an identity theft ring? I don't think so. I love our little tea room here. It's still so nice. We don't go there all that often to actually like spend time there, but maybe we should. We will get a second jade chest full before the crystal er, before the uh, cactus fruit shows up. I mean, at this rate, who knows? Exclamation point! Trash. We are well on our way to. Uh... I mean, I don't know what, what exactly are we even at. I haven't, I haven't looked in a hot minute. We got to be closing in on forty five hundred trash cans, I would assume, if we're not already past it. It's always who you least expect. Touche. You know what we never actually did, now that I'm looking at it? We we have a Humtagoof here. We're not able to get Pinky Lemon because we don't get we're not able to get any more duck mayonnaise, but um Rogmon, we should be able to get him, right? We don't don't we just need like a strange bun? I know we've had strange buns dropped for us in the past. Whether or not I kept one is another matter. 4,352. Yeah, we got some strange buns there. I don't think we ever did this, did we? Why not us? Why not now? Might as well co complete as much of the collection as we can. Humtagoof needs a friend. This this strange capsule is not doing you any favors, sir. You'll go ahead and, you know what? You know what? Maybe we should do it like this. We should do Humtagoof, and we'll leave a spot for Farogmon right behind the right behind there so they can <laughs> creepily watch over us as we sell things, and then we'll just have the strange capsule right there. You'll love it. This is the strange bun. This goes into Vincent's bedroom, right? For whatever reason, he's just hoarding for Rogmon in there. I'm sorry, I saw so many forgeables and I just couldn't not pick them up. No one in his family works anymore. In Sam's family? I guess you're right. I mean, Jody like, does a lot of chores and stuff, but she doesn't actually have a job that we see her do. 
That's very accurate. Alright, it is 9 a.m., which means we can head in here. Vincent, you're just in the nick of time, buddy. Sam, are you alright? He's he's just staring at the ceiling. It's Bro, you, you, you can wake up. Rain muffles sound so I can play my guitar louder without my mom getting mad. He he. What's this? It's Sam's computer. He's got an extensive library of computer games. Yo, he's got it open to his Steam library. You think he's got Elden Ring in there? Vincent's toys are strewn about the room. What's this? What is this note on his? Do you think that's his uh, like report card? Wait, his report card's here, isn't it? This. Yeah, there we go. I knew he had a report card somewhere around here. I wasn't just making that up. Reading C. You got a reading class. Spelling D. Math. Why are you separating reading and spelling into two different categories? That's just all English, as far as I'm concerned. Math, C. Social studies, B minus. B minus. You know what? B minus on these. Not too shabby. Sports, A. Vince. They call him Vince. Is a good boy, but he could make do with a little more studying. Penny. That's so cute. That's adorable. We got people playing Elden Ring in chat right now. Can you put a... We're not going to do Lurker 7s, but if you're playing a d another game while listening to the stream, or, or watching the stream on like a different monitor or something, can you put a little... Why don't you drop a 5 in chat for me? By the way, here's for Rogemon, in case you were curious. Just a little little quick trade. I give you Strange Bun, you give me for Rogemon. Doesn't Sam work at Joe just last the museum? Yeah, he's the, like the only one in the family that seems to have a stable source of income right now. We gotta give Vincent to pass, obviously, but then Kent and Jody. I mean, Jody. Jody's a, a homebody. She's she's a work, she's at home, and then Kent is uh, got his own issues to deal with, of course. So that's a lot of fives. Holy crap! <laughs> I look away from chat for two seconds. I look back. It's just a sheer wall of fives. Kuro Okami sending in five dollars super chat. Thank you for that. I'm gonna take that as another five. Man, yeah. It's it's a common thing to to play games and listen to streams. I honestly find it difficult to play games without listening to something nowadays, but not all the time. It depends on the game. Catching up on some very important star. Do you playing? Doing war crimes in Rim World. Do I even want to know? What's the five for? If you're currently playing a game while while listening to the stream. And for those who aren't, you know what? Even even more respect, honestly. Maybe not even more respect, but at least equal respect. Whether you're doing something else other than gaming, or if you're just literally staring at the screen, watching and listening to me, that's pro that's like the that's got to be the lowest amount of people is people who are actually just watching the stream completely 100% focus on the stream well I'm flattered that you would do something like that I definitely think it's uh, it takes a certain kind of person to to watch all of this <laughs> without without doing anything else but I'm happy to have you here all the same for Ogmon, look oh they're they're facing each other and everything and now they kiss it's like playing with action figures mwah, mwah, mwah. Have I ever gotten a bot raid? We haven't had a, a bot, like, period in the chat in a very long time. I count my blessings for that. For sure. Having you on in the background while I work out? That's another one I always never consider. I always think of, like, working from home or working from work or playing other games. But working out? It's never one that I think of for whatever reason. Either way, get those gains. Used to watch the VODs at 100% speed while doing absolutely nothing else. I had to stop that. Yeah, I was in the same boat with um, catching up on Critical Role episodes for a while. I want to get back into that. I want to I want to catch up on Campaign 3. I've fallen very far behind. I used to be in that boat where I would actually sit there and watch the entire thing. But they're so long, those are usually like 4-5 to five hour videos. That is just not feasible, especially not at 100% speed. I usually do a 1.25x speed. Because that way it's at, it's fast enough that it goes by... For a long video like that, it goes by considerably quicker. But it's not so fast that I'm struggling to understand what's going on. 
If you can do two times speed or 1.5 times speed, more power to you, but it just starts to become too too quick for my brain to fully process in the way that I want it to. True OTP is Krobus X Chloe, don't y'all lie. Gail, aren't you supposed to be in class right now? You just felt the disturbance in the force and you had to come and <laughs> come and drop that one in chat. Welcome back. We can go say hi to Krobus though. It's, it's been a, uh, we haven't done that yet in this stream. It's always a little bit out of the way, but not so far out of the way that we're gonna ignore him. He is our bro. Are we gonna have shipping wars with Chloe? Once we start getting into fanfic territory, if it gets there, exclamation point bet, then uh, we'll see. We shall see. Try to get into Critical Role, but you didn't find the characters that, were, that they were playing very likable. I mean, that's fair. I'm definitely not of the same opinion. I love all the characters that they play. I will admit I'm finding it harder to get into Campaign 3 than I was to get into Campaign 2. Campaign 2, I think, is the, is the best one so far, for sure. On Fridays, he says Silent is a sign of devotion to Yoba. That much we know. I wonder what his name means, though. What, what would Krobus mean in his language? I wish he'd told me. Now I have to wonder. Yeah, not every character in, in Critical Role is going to be uh, a slam dunk for everybody, obviously, but I think I think the characters that they made for Campaign 2 are definitely some of the most compelling for me. I'm definitely a Jester and Caleb man myself. I don't think that's a controversial opinion, especially for Jester. She was, uh, she was a 10 out of 10 character in my eyes. Dungeons and Daddies is hilarious. I, I'm not familiar with Dungeons and Daddies, and I'm not sure that I want to be. Although I haven't, I've, I've never watched another like Dungeons and Dragons related show other than Critical Role. Mostly because I don't really have time even for Critical Role nowadays, so trying to squeeze a new thing in there, it would be even harder. Six hundred and forty trash cans to go. Correction, uh, six hundred and thirty-two. Happy early birthday, vibe. Yeah, absolutely. Hope it turns out to be a good one for you. The adventure zone balance was your favorite. Never heard of that one either. There's like way more D&D &D and just tabletop game shows out there in general than I ever thought that there were. A lot of them do take the form of podcasts as opposed to full productions, which obviously makes sense. Not everyone has the kind of budget that Critical Role has being like the most popular one by a by a landslide. Anytime I've played D&D, &D, though, I've always done it. We've always done it with, like, miniatures and stuff and actual battle maps. I'd find uh, doing Theater of the Mind, where you just have to imagine where you are in relation to everything and try to keep track of it all in your head. I could probably do it, but I do think it would be very different and very... I don't know if it would lose something or if it would just be different in general than, uh, than the way I've learned to do it. Go to sleep for the night? Yeah. Is it just me or did the stream start to feel like waiting for the cactus fruit so we can make progress? Welcome to the Price of Perfection. Enjoy your stay. Real talk, I mean, I do try to inject as much uh, entertainment and, and a bunch of side diversions in here as I can, when I can. But it does become a little hard sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. We've come so far now, though, I, to, if I were to, like, give up now, just be like, all right, guys, I asked Blade in between streams, and this is the day that we have to sleep, too. Let's do it. 
I feel like that would just be so deflating and defeating for me personally. Maybe that would be the way that most people would want the stream to go. They'd be alright with that. But personally, after this much investment especially, it's kind of the sunk cost fallacy to a certain extent, but also this is just the way I would do it if I was playing the game normally without uh, streaming it. And I don't want to jeopardize that integrity. We are very entertained. I mean, I would hope so. I, I don't imagine that this many people would be sticking around for what is essentially the same day repeated over and over and over again with very slight variations every now and again. If I wasn't entertaining in some capacity, so I'm glad that I'm able to provide that for you. Are we sure the cacti can drop from trash cans? They can, yes. People have gotten them in their own playthroughs before. It's listed on the wiki. As, as long as you've completed the vault bundles, which we 100% have, this is the only bundle we have left for the community center, then you're golden. I also love the movie Groundhog Day. Touche. It's like the Groundhog Day of Stardew Valley. That's what I've always said. I forgot that we planted this random rogue blue jazz up here, but there you go. Might as well pick the tomatoes and everything as well. It's, it's a rare greenhouse run. We don't do these nearly as often as we used to. Every once in a while, you gotta throw one in there. Alright, so we put take all these out. We'll get these jazz seeds ready. Do a little something like this. Put that away. Alright. I'd choose to just do trash cans and sleep, but you do you. I'm planning for the future to, to a certain extent, at least with these, like, uh, blue jazz and everything. But I've been doing my best to cut out, uh extraneous chores now that we're at a point where we can realistically do that. We don't need any more money, obviously. The main things we're focusing on are jades and garbage cans. Which, obviously, you could segment it if you wanted to into be just being like, we're only going to focus on the garbage cans for this portion, and then after that, then we can start working on grinding out jades hardcore. But I like to do them sort of in parallel here, which might me make it feel like it takes longer in the moment, but it'll save us a lot of Time and heartache in the future is the way that I like to think of it. Yeah, we're not even doing traveling carts anymore. Because we already got everything that we can, as far as I can tell. Oh, man. Do you think there's that... Like, did you see the magnetism on that? That was crazy. I wonder if you can outrun that, like, all the way down to the beach here, if you got the perfect line. I'd love to see some like a, like an attempt at that. That would be really really kind of cool. Maybe if we had a little, if you had an extra speed buff from food in addition to the triple shot espresso, you could probably outrun one of those things, or at least keep pace with it so that it stays at a perpetual distance away from you. Do you really need? Do you really see us needing this many Lucky Lunches slash Jades? Absolutely, 100%. With the amount of Skull Cavern spelunking we're, we're bound to do, we don't have enough Jades yet. We probably, like, we, like I don't think we need this many Crystallariums, that's one thing. We probably have more than enough Crystallariums to get all the Jades we will eventually need. But the amount of Jades that we currently have is not going to be enough. That much I can almost guarantee. As for the lucky lunches, I don't have a I don't have a great metric for how many of those we're due to need, but it's going to be more than what we currently have. I can almost I can say that for almost for sure as well, because we want at least one for every day that we go spelunking, and we're going to have a lot of those days ahead of us. Hope your calculus final went well there, blinding shot. Welcome to the stream. You haven't missed anything too super impactful. We had the Stardew Valley uh, fair earlier on, which is always a fun time, and then we had the we beat Junimo Kart, which was probably the most uh, the most excitement we've had so far. It was a good time though. It was still a great run, honestly. Imagine you just get all five seeds on your first Skull Caverns dive. It's it's technically possible. 
I don't want to talk about it too much because, you know, the less we talk about it, the more likely it is to happen, in theory. Pretty sure that's how that works. As long as the universe doesn't hear you bragging about how something might happen, it'll make it more likely for that to happen so it can blindside you. You beat Junimo Kart? I did. We got the whole machine here and everything. Nice little home arcade system. We can actually make a game room if we really, if we really wanted to now. Now that we have uh, both game systems in. You didn't see me beat Junimo Kart, therefore it didn't happen? I mean, how did I get this then? That's a question you're going to have to grapple with yourself. Whatever answer you decide to come to, I mean, I can't, uh, I can't disprove you. Actually, I can because you just go back like an hour or two in the VOD and and you can see it happen live. I will look forward to checking out that in the Discord there, Vibe. Thank you for sharing. Always interested in seeing uh, what people come up with for indie video games and that sort of thing. It's a lot of work to make a game, so kudos, kudos. Trash cans are the final boss, like Ornstein and Smo. <laughs> Ornstein and Smo are a very difficult boss, but I don't think I think there have been much more difficult bosses in later games of the Dark Souls series, for sure. Like, I'd hazard a guess that the majority of the bosses in the Dark Souls 3 DLCs were harder than Ornstein and Smo. Or Ornstein and Smau, or Smog, or however you want to say it. Y'all know what I'm talking about, at least. They're a very infamous boss in the Dark Souls pantheon. They're hard, but once you get the mechanics of the game down... They're not, like, the worst thing in the world. I can usually beat them in, uh, on, like, a regular play playthrough. Probably, like, less than five attempts. Once I get the hang of their movement patterns and stuff. And their, their move sets. What about the Bed of Chaos? The Bed of Chaos is its own beast. It's not fair to include that in a, in a boss tier list for Dark Souls. Because the Bed of Chaos is... So different and so BS compared to pretty much any other boss that it's like in a category all its own. It's not it's not a boss fight, it's like a puzzle. <laughs> it's a platforming puzzle, the worst kind in Dark Souls anyway. Super Mario Odyssey, this is not. Bed of Chaos, I can at least win by attrition. That's true, I suppose. I cannot argue with that point. Can't you buy the Golden Clock right now? If I was able to complete the Community Center, yes. But the Cactus Fruit is also our, our doorstop on that one. It's like, I can see the, it's like I can see the Golden Clock right in the distance. It's just within reach. And then I look down at my feet, and there's a large cactus root shaped hole blocking the path. And I'm like, son of a gun. Not this again. Welcome back, Andrew. Happy to have you. Hope class was good for you. Real question, how often do you people read newspapers? My chat is, my audience in general is, is on the younger side, I would imagine. I know there are some, uh, some older folks around, like older than me at least. Not old, old, but you know, may, I mean, maybe if, I mean, if there's anyone out there in their like 60s or 70s watching, more power to you. But newspapers, I was, I think I was like of the last generation of people that read newspapers in any appreciable capacity. I just, I used to have a newspaper subscription. Yeah, I see a lot of people saying like, never, never, not even once. One time. 
Yeah, I used to have a newspaper subscription, but then I realized that every time I was getting it, I would just like look at the headline and then be like, oh, that's interesting and not read any further. I'll tell you too, it's like kind of hellish to cancel a newspaper subscription, at least the one that I had. I had to jump through so many hoops and like go through eight different cancellation processes. It was, it was too much. Sorry, I was just looking at something. Uh, go to sleep for the night? Yeah. I'm 31, I've read them a few times, but not really a thing now. Even I'm 23 and I barely ever read a newspaper. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm 27 and I have, uh... I have, I have memories of looking through newspapers, but not in any appreciable capacity. I think, honestly, I've probably read more newspapers than the average person in my age bracket. And even then, I'm not blowing the doors off. I'm not setting any records with my newspaper collections or anything. Why are you growing grass in your house? I think the real question is, why aren't you? Mm -hmm. It's mainly for decoration, though, is the, is the real answer. For Ogmon, looking... Like, I just... It's hard for me to tell, like... What's... Is this like a... a let, me, let me get a better look at this dude. Hold on. I need, I need to look at him. I've never really taken the time to appreciate Farogmon's face. I think like these are his lips and he's like looking up at like a slight angle. This little like single dark pixel right here is his eye. And then he's got this big freaking goiter. Like he's straight up got gout or something. This is a, this is quite the character design, is all I'm going to say. I've never really taken the time to appreciate it, you know what? I always just kind of look at him as like a weird green blob, but now that I look at that, he's he's a little cuter than I gave him credit for. Not going to lie. I'm going to say something controversial, but I use Twitter to get news. I think a lot of people are in that same boat, to be per perfectly honest. Newspapers have died out very much so in favor of the internet. You can just, like, get the newspapers on the internet now, anyway. They have, like, the e-versions of newspapers. So you don't usually need the paper version unless you're making paper mache or something. Statue tier list when? Just the, th the three statues, that's it? Or do we include, like, Wombus and stuff in there, too, in the Mayor Lewis gold statue? I don't know, maybe, maybe there are enough statues in Stardew Valley to do a real tier list. I guess you don't need that many things to actually do a tier list. What do you think is the perfect number of things to make a tier list of? Because you could make a tier list of like one or two things. It would be very boring, probably. And wouldn't have that much... ...value, I suppose? But you can also do the tier list of like 10,000 things, and that would just take way too long, and it would be so overflowing with information that nobody would be able to parse what's going on. What do you think is the happy medium? I want to say like maybe like 20 to 30 things is probably a good tier list length. 14 items, how very specific. Krobus statue and the Master Uguay statue too. I, there is the Iridium Krobus, we're going to have to pick that one up when we get the chance. You just don't have the materials to, to, pull, to pull that off yet. Actually, I don't even know if you can do that with the bamboo pole, but we'll try. 10 to 25 items. 20 to 30, not too big, but big enough to have multiple tiers. Yeah, you gotta be able to split it into, like, at least, like, five tiers, preferably, and have, like, at least one thing in each tier. And I think, like, a good 20 to 30 is a good, uh... You're probably gonna hit all your different requisite qualifiers using that number would be my guess anyway. I haven't done enough tier lists to know. I've only done the one tier list on stream of all the Sardi Valley characters and having done that I know that it was probably too long of a tier list. That one was too big. There's a reason people keep it much shorter than that. At the same time, I am of the opinion that uh, if you're going to do something you might as well do it as thoroughly as possible. Imagine doing a color tier list. 
of like all the different colors that exist in the world as far as like computers go. Because if you just go like based on like RGB colors, right, and all the different values that those can have, I don't, I'm not going to do the math to figure out how many different color combinations there are for like RGB values, but it's got to be a lot. And imagine trying to rank all those. I, I would watch that video, at least for like, I don't know, 50 seconds or so. And be like, man, that's kind of a novel concept. And maybe, and then you just skip to the end to see the actual tier list. It would take way too long. It, it's, it would not even be, uh... <laughs> There's no way you could condense that into like a single video. Not even a chance. Have a good one there, Mabby. Did I do exclamation point more trash? I did not. For some reason, I'm feeling like I actually... The fact that I didn't do more trash makes me think that I skipped a garbage can or that I, didn't, that I forgot to do the last garbage cans after I did my beach run. So I'm going to really quick run back and double check just because I am that paranoid. And I'd rather find out now than later. All, all colors are S tier in their own right. Depends on the context, but I'd probably agree with that. Each color has its own specific use case for sure yeah all right we're good we're good unpopular opinion but i can't stand tiered lists so i don't get the hype i think people just like to be mad <laughs> is the real answer to that people like to have controversy or have arguments but they don't want to get mad about like real things they don't want to have uh, arguments about things that are like impacting their lives. They'd rather just have that arguments and get that energy out in the in a safe format where, for and for like a tier list of like characters in an anime or something, that's a very safe format to do that in because it can get into some pretty heated arguments depending on the tier list that you're doing. But it's never going to be like one of those things that's uh, that's going to be a friendship breaker probably. Maybe, though. I mean, depends on how seriously you take all all the characters in Death Note to your list or something. Check Josh's house. That's a deep cut there, Clunky. That's, that's George, Alex, and Evelyn's house. You don't get it at all? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, some people just like to see other people's opinions on things or and... Uh, and get argumentative about it, because everyone has a different tier list for different things. Like, you'd be hard-pressed to pick two random people off the street and have them make a tier list of a, of a substantial enough category that is identical to one another. It's just not how people work. What am I doing for tomorrow's variety stream? Probably just more of the price of perfection, to be honest, because it's what I enjoy doing right now. I, I, I always reserve the right to use a Friday stream for variety content, but right now, I'm just having a grand old time grinding out the price of perfection, to be honest with you. And if I'm enjoying it and I can't think of anything else that I'd rather be streaming, then I think that's what I should go with. I'm always of the opinion that uh, the content that you want to make is the, is the content that people are going to want to watch. Maybe not in every circumstance, but if you've got the passion and the drive and the happiness is there, then it's going to increase the likelihood that people are going to want to stick around and watch that just because it's going to be an infectious sort of attitude, right? Like, if I was really not into this cactus fruit grind and was just, uh, you know, putting in the days and walking around not saying a word on stream and just like clicking the garbage cans over and over again, sleeping the days away, totally bored out of my mind. I imagine I would have like way, way fewer viewers and active chatters and everything than I currently do. It would not even be a contest. People are there for the engagement of the streamer. They like seeing someone excited about something. What rank would Gubble be in your games tier list? I can't, I couldn't even do like a whole games tier list. There's too many games and should try and rank them all against one another. It's very difficult for me to like, that's why I've always had a tough time deciding what my favorite game of all time would be. 
because it's um so hard for me to judge games of such vastly different scopes on equal ground. Like, I can't compare Dark Souls 3 to the likes of um, Picross or something. Like, the Picross collection on the Nintendo Switch. There's just, like, no comparison to be made there that I feel would be fair. They, they both serve their own independent niches. Sometimes I'd rather play one over the other. It's just a matter of uh, of timing and perspective, and is one better than the other? I mean, if you were to ask me based on like all their merits, I'd probably say that Dark Souls 3 is, is my preference there, but that could change depending on the day. I'm interested to see what will happen first. Your road trip will end or the stream will end? Depends how far you have to go. I still got an hour left in the stream. Only an hour left. Man, we go th we go through these days fast. <laughs> or we go through the time flies fast. We actually don't go through the days all that fast. Hopefully we'll get through the rest of fall this stream, though. We should, I would imagine. I can't see why we wouldn't. Have I played Elden Ring? I have not yet beaten it. I haven't had enough time to dedicate in between streams and editing and all these other things to actually finish it off, but I am a decent ways into the game now for sure, yeah. But I mean, I'm doing a, I'm doing myself a disservice because I could have beaten the game probably in the amount of time, ooh, sorry, in the amount of time that I've committed to it. But, I, I'm such a diehard ex exploration fan, I gotta search every single corner of the Earth. Like, there'll just be like a random plateau in Limgrave or something that I that I see off in the distance, and I'm like, ooh, I wonder what's on there, and you go over there and it's like an arteria leaf or something that I'm never gonna use. But I get excited, and I'm like, oh yeah, I've explored this corner of the Earth now. And I just do that for literally every single pixel and polygon of that game. I will do everything in my power to avoid progressing the story, but both in Elden Ring and in any game that's like open world and has any kind of uh, any kind of aspect like that. I am a side quest extraordinaire player. Have you played Breath of the Wild? It's in that exact same boat. To be perfectly honest, I've played it. Never beaten it because I got so distracted with everything else and got so overwhelmed and then I like took some time off from it. And when I came back to it, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore, so I'm just going to start again. And I fall into that trap too a lot, especially with big games where if I take any amount of time off from them at all, when I come back, I'm pretty liable to just like reset the entire game just because I want to have that experience again. And I remember enjoying the start of the game so much that I was just like, yeah, let's uh, let's just start again. And now that I've learned some things from my first playthrough, I can do things a little differently, and then... It never works out, though, because you always end up doing that, and then you'll have fun at the start, but then you'll always want to restart and try something new and different, because the game is so long that it takes a long time to actually get to the end and progress to the point that you want to. It's... And... You just end up not completing any games, if, if you do it that way every single time. Pokemon is like that for you? Same, honestly. The grind for Pokemon to get them to like a high enough level and get all the gym badges and stuff can be... It depends on the game. It varies from game to game for sure. But it can be a little daunting when you first start a, start out a new file. Or alternatively, when you come back after not having played it for a very long time. Pokemon is kind of in a different niche of its own though. Where when you come back to a Pokemon save file, it's a little bit of a time capsule. It's, it's a little bit easy, more of a time capsule than most other games, I would say, at least, because you got your collection, you can look through your boxes and your party and be like, oh man, I remember this guy. I remember the Torterra named Grump. And you can just, uh, like, have all these different memories come flooding back to you. It's, it's laid out in a way that is very conducive to that feeling, I feel like. You're a completionist, so you always end up doing random side quests just to finish them all. Yeah, even if it's a side quest that I know has a reward that I will never use or 
has no use even. Sometimes there's like a literal trophy or something like that that has no purpose other than to say, hey, you did this. You committed however many hours out of your life in order to get these digital pixels. That's always enough for me. I'm just like, yes, that feeling of accomplishment. I may never use this uh, ultimate power weapon because I feel like it would be cheating, but now that I have it in my possession, I can feel accomplished. And the cycle just repeats for every single game out there. It's very rare that I end up using anything that I get from a side quest, unless it's specific to a build that I'm making, that I, like I have a specific idea in mind for something I want to do in Dark Souls or, a, or similar styles of games, and I end up uh, going out of my way to do that side quest so I can get the thing, and then going through with everything else. Completionist to your life. So true, so true. Monster Rancher is the only game I ever played where... The only video game I ever played much before getting my hands on a DS. Hmm, okay, well, I mean, that's... It's three streams in a row. Sir, I'm pretty sure you asked for a coconut on the bulletin board yesterday. I think that literally was Kent, wasn't it? Or am I mistaken? I didn't take the quest because I'm like, yeah, there's no shot that we get a coconut. Or maybe it was a couple days ago. I don't even know. Chalk it up. Put it on the put it on the chalkboard. Put it on the leaderboard. Take there's your bingo card. There's your, there's your square on the bingo card. Argon got another desert item, got another one. It's not even a desert fish this time. It's a freaking coconut. It's been a while since we've seen one. It's kind of a sight for sore eyes, I'm not going to lie. But uh, at the same time, every single one of these... Like, we, we, we went for a pretty long spell without getting any of these desert-related items from the, from the garbage cans. And now three streams in a row... It's just back to back to back to back. It's, it's it's insane. It's too much game, all right? I get it. It's a funny joke. We're about to hit double-digit desert items without having gotten a single cactus fruit. Whoopie freaking do. It's so funny. Ha ha ha. Look at the streamer. He's getting angry cuz he's getting he's getting screwed by the odds. Yeah, I'm angry, okay? Fine. <laughs> I'm a little upset. Because how do you go nine desert items from garbage cans without a single cactus fruit? And now it's out of my system. It's out of my system. We can move along, okay? Move right along. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Little exclamation point, more trash. Breathe in. Breathe out. Ooh. All right. What a lovely coconut. We'll save that for a rainy day. We'll use something. We'll use it for something special. Have no fear. Hello, Pamela. Lovely day. Every day is the same old routine. You're telling me, girl. You're telling me. <laughs> Argon popping off. That was, it's probably the loudest I've gotten on stream, I'm not gonna lie. It's one of those where I'm like, I heard I heard my voice and I'm like, oh shoot, did my neighbors hear that? <laughs> These walls are pretty, uh, pretty good when it comes to sound, though. I often don't hear my neighbors, so I have to assume that they don't hear me. But... I don't know how often my neighbors are out here yelling about cactus fruit, so. I did get some tasty cookies that I immediately sold. But you know what? Maybe I shouldn't sell them. Maybe I should, uh... <laughs> Maybe I should just give let Chloe indulge a little bit. Knowing our luck, they're probably coconut cookies, too. Just to rub salt in the wound. Woke up all the sleeping people watching this. Sorry to all the sleepers out there. Hopefully you're a deep enough sleeper that that was not uh, too bad for you. Next year's de Grange display is 100% de desert items, but no cactus fruit. Imagine we fill out a Grange display with nothing but sandfish, scorpion carps, and coconuts. 
I'd be here for it. Obviously, our score would be trash, but it would be fitting because they all came from the trash, too. From the pr primordial ooze of the Calico Desert. All right. Frickin' after that, after after this, after the amount of turmoil I've been through, I'm I'm sending a Junimo car endless run. We got, we're we're going for it. I just gotta I gotta feel something, okay? I need to I need to prove that I can still enjoy this. Okay, no, we're we're still having fun. I play it up for dramaticism from time to time, but realistically, it's all in good spirit. It is, it is slightly annoying. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's focus on the actual run, though. That one didn't count. That was just a warm-up one to get the controls back under our belt. Now we actually send it for a real Juno McCart run. Just get lost in the nirvana of the music, and... Oh, I'm at peace. I have come to terms with it. I did beat Junimo Kart. That was earlier this stream, yeah. Indeed, indeed. And now I can just enjoy it at home to my heart's content. I don't have to wait for, for Gus to open his saloon at the ungodly hour of 12 p.m. I'm usually in bed at, like, at least like an hour or two beforehand, so... We can do our best here. That's 25,000 points. That's like 30,000 points right there. Holy crap. That's already our high score. We just did so well in those first two levels. <laughs> Alright, one more, one more. We do it in groups of threes around here. No matter how this goes, this will be our last Junimo Kart run for the day. Those fruits really do pay off, huh? That extra 5,000 adds up. I feel like that was a shorter version of the level than even normal, but it's all good. I'm so used to the progress mode levels being like so long. They're actually like literal marathons compared to what we're doing here. Ooh, that was a bit of a t a bit of a close one. A bit of a close call for sure. Missed the orange, but I did at least survive. That's what counts right now. We won't get our 5,000 bonus, but that's still a pretty good score at the end of the day. Don't we need coconuts for the Desert Obelisk and Warp Totems? You do, but we can also get uh, all the coconuts that we're going to need from Ginger Island. You just, like, shake the trees there and they just drop coconuts from time to time. Which is going to be a much more plausible way for us to do it. I was aiming for that bubble so hard. <laughs> oh, well. Um, do I still have the coconut in my inventory, or did I... What did I do with the coconut? I, like, just yeeted it somewhere and didn't even think about it. Is it in here? I would have to assume. Yeah. Did we tailor a coconut yet? We have not made a shirt using a coconut. That's... In Initsu, you are on the same wavelength as me. We might have to do that. But we'll just wait for our next coconut, because you know one's going to come along. Hey there, Fiona. Welcome to the stream. Haley getting existential in here. What's happening to me? I think we've all been there. We can all relate to that feeling. All right, today is an important day because it is the Spirit Eve Festival, which means we have to wait until the end of the day before we can do our garbage run. It's going to be one of those late night ones. A little bit of money on the side. A little bit of Monica in my life. Would it be funny if you had enough coconuts to build the Desert Warp Totem without going to Ginger Island? I don't want to live in a world where that's a real possibility. That just sounds just abysmal. If we got 10 coconuts before getting a single cactus fruit from the garbage cans, I would, like, uninstall the game. Not even lying. You can, you can quote me on that, because it's not going to happen. There's just no chance. Now, real quick, I'm going to take a quick drink here. Mute myself.
All right. My throat is starting to recover a little bit. <laughs> it was it was quite the profound scream. It was a little more real than I wanted it to be. I would like to formally apologize. It's a little a little later now, but I know uh, the apology is still hopefully valid. Have you gotten any coconuts, cubing nerd? Welcome to the stream. You must be new here. We just you just you just uh. If you're here within the past 20 minutes, like if you know, you know, right? Creeping up on 5,000 quickly, exclamation point bet. We are getting close. Thank you for the 79 cent uh, super chat there, Leafy. Appreciate it. The support is always greatly appreciated. Very generous. All right. Blue super chat for drinking water. <laughs> Joke's on you, I'm drinking a Diet Coke today. Usually it's water, but I had felt like a little extra flavor that was was needed this time. Want to mix it up a little bit. Alright. So yeah, I guess we just, uh, yeah, we'll grind out our crystallariums, whatever resources we can get today. And then we'll see how the feast of the I was feast of the winter star. That's gonna be that's gonna be next stream probably feast of the winter star. Depending on how fast we can get through winter, I'm not quite sure yet. The night market always throws a wrench into things when I don't think it will. But Spirit's Eve is is the one that we're actually looking for. We actually have a pretty like sizable stack of gold pumpkins back at home. I don't think we've done anything with them, have we? We might have given one as a gift on a birthday at some point. That seems to ring a bell. But otherwise, I think we're, we've just been hoarding them. Alex Reinders, thank you for the $5 super chat as well. Just says, uh, beat the no beat the Godskin Noble giving you trouble. Congrats, that is a boss in Elden Ring for th those not in the know. Um, very, very tough boss as well, so... Huge congrats to you. I, I have seen the Godskin Noble in other people's playthroughs. I have yet to encounter it myself. I've beaten the Godskin Apostle. That was a hard enough one for me. I don't know if it's harder or easier. I would I would assume easier because I hear more people talking about the Noble than the Apostle. Either way though, beating any kind of boss in Elden Ring, no small feat. Except maybe like a Cemetery Shade. That's kind of like a pushover. But. You could tailor a Golden Pumpkin and wear it on Spirit's Eve. What does the Golden Pumpkin make? I would, if I had to guess, I'd say like it's probably a ha Halloweeny thing, like a, like a witch's hat. That seems like a like a plausible guess. What's five hundred gold in the grand scheme of things? Too much. One gold is too much in the grand scheme of things. We're penny pinching as best we can. Welcome to Frugal Farm. Enjoy your stay. We don't have any hors d'oeuvres for you to snack on or appetizers because we did, they weren't in the budget. So if the golden pumpkin does make a witch's hat, follow-up question, is there anything that makes uh, the rest of the witch's outfit? I want to be a, a real wickety chickety cosplayer out in here. If we're gonna go the full, di if we're gonna go with the hat, we gotta go the full distance. And if it's something that's readily accessible to me, then we gotta try it for sure. We gotta come up with a good Halloween costume, a good Spirit's Eve costume. I also gotta start thinking of a good scary story. Hold on. It's become a, a pseudo tradition for me to st tell a scary story on Spirit's Eve as we're going through the maze, so. I'm going to need to think on that for a second. I think I've, I think I've got a good premise for a scary story in the back of my head. We'll see how it, we'll see how it pans out. I'm going to have to add a little bit a little bit when we get to the actual moment. Do you have any ghost stories? I don't have any like real like true to life ghost stories. The closest I have is one I actually told on stream earlier where I used to have uh like it used to be a sort of thing where anytime I would wake up, 
in a certain room that I lived in, that I lived in, an old house. Um, I would I would have a lot of nightmares in that room, and I would have uh, an experience where I would feel like the bottom half of my bed, like the part where my feet are, would bounce up at like a crazy velocity, or like it would it was, it was a big big old bump in the night, really. And uh, then I got a dream catcher, and that entire experience stopped. I no longer had any nightmares. I never felt that uh, big bump in the night again. I don't know if there was any kind of it was. It must have been some kind of placebo effect, probably, because I don't really believe in all the in all the dream catcher stuff myself. I'm, I'm a man of science, but it did give me pause. It gave me pause for sure. This is completely out of left field, by the way, but it's it's only based off of the fact that I just said the word pause and it made me, made me think of this. What the heck is up with uh, that song that goes up on the rooftop, reindeer pause? Down the chimney comes Santa Claus? Reindeers, no, okay. I've heard arguments for this before. I don't remember where from, but there's two camps that people fall into. It's either reindeers don't have paws, they have hooves, Right? So the, the song doesn't make sense there, but then people who are counter to that argument will say, Oh, it's not talking about, like, the paws of a reindeer. It's talking about, like, up on the rooftop, and then the reindeer's paws up on the rooftop. Like, they stop for a second so that Santa can get off and, like, do his thing, right? But... That makes at least a little more sense than, than reindeer paws, because reindeers have hooves. It still doesn't, like, work, though, because it's... Number one, it's just a bad lyric. Up on the rooftop, reindeers pause. Like, of course they pause. They're they're stopping there to, so that Santa can get off. You don't have to say that. And then number two, it's not even, like, grammatically correct. Up on the rooftop, reindeers pause. Or reindeer pause. It's not even, like, reindeers pause. It's, it's, I mean, I guess reindeer and reindeers are two plurals of the same type. Two sides of the same coin. And I mean, honestly, the real answer is that whoever was writing the song just couldn't think of a good way to rhyme with Santa Claus, so they had to throw pause in there, even if it didn't make any sense at all. And they just hoped that no one would notice, but here I am, however many decades later, up on the rooftop reindeer, <laughs> reindeer's pog. <laughs> I like that better, up on the rooftop reindeer pog. That's how you feel when you when it comes to Christmas. And you hear the little clip clop on this on the roof, up on the rooftop, reindeer pog. I've never heard it say reindeer paws. Up on the housetop, click, 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 down the chimney comes comes good Saint Nick. I thought it was paws, not paws. Yeah, this uh, like I don't know, we're all discovering things today. This has been your segment where Argon critiques language and or song lyrics for the stream. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. We need a Chloe Pog emote. We definitely do. Like the hype the hype emote is good, but a good a good Chloe Pog emote could also be in the works for sure. I'll have to talk to to Aru's about that. If they want to do any more emotes, I haven't uh, discussed it with them since I got the first batch made. We have room for like so many more emotes now, thanks to all you guys becoming members. Thank you so much for enabling that for me. It's super, super cool to see. To see the community growing and appreciating it and uh, enjoying the emotes and everything. Makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Like reindeer paws. I would like to alert you to the fact that it's April. Thank you. I mean, I already knew that because it's because uh, I go and look at a calendar every now and again. But some people might not have realized that it's April. April showers bring May flowers. I've never lived in a place where that's actually true, by the way. Pretty much anywhere that I've lived has been. Uh, Pretty much the same geographically, and also the same climate-wise, obviously. Where April showers just bring more May showers. 
Like, and it's usually not even showers. Usually it's snow in April still. And then it just keeps snowing all the way to like May long weekend. Intermittently. Like, it's less snow than you get in February and March for sure. And it usually melts a lot faster. But the snow is there nevertheless. I have... I have lived here long enough that I've seen snow every single month of the year. Sometimes it's more common than others, obviously, but... I've seen that fabled June, July, August snowfall. It is, uh... <laughs> doesn't happen every year, that's for sure, but... Hurricane season is coming. I'm very fortunate to live in a region of the world where I don't have to worry about natural disasters like hurricanes. The worst I might have to ever worry about is a tornado, but even those don't form around here often at all. I don't think earthquakes are that far-reaching that they would uh, that would hit hit me on this on this side of the mountains. Has anyone in chat lived through an earthquake? And I'm willing to take any uh, any earthquakes into consideration. Whether you were part, whether you were there for like a crazy 8.0 Richter scale earthquake in Fukushima, Japan, I don't know if that was 8.0 or not, but or if it was just like a like a five second earthquake that measured 0.01 on the Richter scale, and you just kind of like looked over and saw like your glass of water wobbling a little bit, and you're like, oh, that's weird. Either way, it seems like a very surreal experience. Yep, Southern California. You had a bunch in California. California does get them fairly often, just like a lot of like minor ones, right? Like it's got to be such a like I would, I already questioned myself enough on so many different things. If I was in an earthquake like that, like just a little minor one or even like a major one, because they would probably would probably ramp up to a major one from a minor one, I would be looking around and being like, am I seeing things right now or? Did that chair just move on its own and it's like wobbling across the floor? It would be such a... such an unreal experience. The only, like, actual experience I have with earthquakes is seeing them in movies or news reports and things. Felt kind of crazy. Japan gets them every year? Yeah, Japan is also on that uh, ring of fire, right? So... That big old fault line. I live in Utah, and we've had a couple over the past few years. One of them was a little worse than the other. My ceiling fan was on, and it fell out of the socket a bit and almost dropped all the way down. That would absolutely freak me out. Any kind of movement of furniture or appliances or anything like that would absolutely... I'd be like, I'm out of here. <laughs> and that's my cue to leave. Earthquakes here, you can hear them coming. I don't often think of New Zealand as an earthquake-rich place. Hello, by the way, Blade. But I guess it would be. It's on that same... Uh, well, it's, I don't know if it's not on the Ring of Fire, but it must be on another fault line, I would assume. Or near another fault line. Near enough. Alright, so we have to go to Spirit's Eve. We don't have enough time to really go and tailor an outfit for it like I, like I maybe wanted to. But we'll consider that for next year. I'll put a little more thought into it next time. This time we're just coming in glowing like a... Uh, <laughs> Like a freaking jack-o'-lantern. What the heck? Is that gonna go away, or is that does the timer for this anti-buff, this this weird curse, not stop <laughs> during the? It's normally done by now, right? I'm not crazy. You're crazy. All right, I guess we're just gonna have to live with it. We're cursed in like actually cursed forever. We're a real witch. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's so funny. Booga booga. Have you had a productive fall? Oh, I mean, you could say that. We did beat Junimo Kart, so that was a thing. Eek, I'm too scared. What's there to be scared of? What are you afraid of? <laughs> I say as I'm glowing bright pink and red. All right, we got to go into the maze. It's time for a scary story. Let me get my storyteller's voice on. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a lovely young girl by the name of Chloe who was so desperate to find a cactus fruit. 
She spent many, many years searching garbage can after garbage can after garbage can after garbage can, looking for the fable fruit, knowing that it was only a single bus ticket away. But she dared not. She dared not. 500 gold was far, far too expensive. So she pressed onward, slowly losing her mind. But eventually, one day, she stumbled across the fabled fruit of all places in the garbage can outside of her local Joja Mart. She was so ecstatic. She was over the moon at finally having achieved her goal after so many long years, after nine long years in-game years. She took it home, hoisting it over her head for all to see in her victory march back to her house. And she threw it immediately into the seed maker when she arrived back home. But as opposed to all the other times when she had used the seed maker, this seed maker made a loud whirring sounds, like something had gone wrong in the process. And sure enough, when the seed maker was due to be finished, all it spat out was a pile of old green and red fabric and some cotton. And in and amongst the detritus, there was a single tag that said, Cactus Fruit Plush, made in China, property of Joja Mart. And that's when Chloe went to bed and never woke up again, <laughs> because that's, uh, that's a reality none of us want to face. I could have gone the route of making it mixed seeds or an ancient seed as well, but you know what? I feel like that was a little more of a curveball. Was that the day, the redacted day of redacted year redacted? It indeed was, Blade. We're on the same wavelength, you and I. I hope you all enjoyed the story. All right, leave Spirit to Eve. Once you do the festival will end, let's do it, and then let's go on our garbage hunt for the day. Quickly grab one of these, and we'll be on our way. Please let this jinxed effect end. Thank you. <laughs> I was worried I was going to be cursed forevermore. We're not going to worry about the crystallariums. We don't have time for it. Get some argon cactus in chat if you got it, or just a regular cactus emoji if you don't. This would be the perfect time to get it, right after the Spirit's Eve Festival. It would be so, such a clutch moment. You'd remember it for all time. Especially after that scary, spooky story. If I get a cactus fruit out of Jojimar, I'm going to have to double-check that sucker. That is not an actual uh, plush ornamentation. 1 a.m. We're pushing it to the limit. We're going down to the wire, baby. Vincent's not here. Sometimes you expect him to be, but life is full of surprises. And boom. Exclamation point. More freaking trash. Thank you all for the cactus fruit energy regardless. Did not pay off this time. Take it to the limit one more time. All right, let's get back. let's get home now. We'll sleep and we'll sort out our inventory in the morning. Tim Beeb fell asleep playing Prairie King himself. Can't fault him for it, honestly. Exclamation point! More freaking trash. Yeah, that's uh, that adds that adds eight to the trash count all the same, but it does it with a little extra pizzazz. Nightbot has like a frowny face emoji when it does it. You know what, while we got the golden pumpkin in tow, let's actually tailor it so we have the option available to us in the future. We talked about this, so let's, uh, while it's on my mind. Makes a hat. It does indeed make a witch hat. A pointy hat popular with the witches. That's so fitting. That's, that's a beautiful hat right there. If we had a better outfit to match it, I think this could, uh... This could be top tier fashion. But as it stands right now, we'll just leave it be. And move on with our day. 
Is there like a real witch outfit or do you just have to make kind of like a black dress? If you want to have a matching ensemble. I don't know if I ever got closure on that question or not. Let's get some of this smelting here. Not gonna worry about getting rid of this grass, even though it is kind of annoying. It will be gone tomorrow for winter, so I am fine with that. We also got Krobus's birthday coming up tomorrow. Got a gold gold tier pumpkin for him right there. Not super concerned about it. We'll make our way over to the mines to drop all this off. We'll do our quarry today. And we'll get a cactus fruit on top of it all. Someone said to tailor a void essence. I can do that. That seems like it would uh, line up with the whole witchy Halloween atmosphere, right? The same skirt you have, but in black. That would probably, yeah, would, would do the trick. We just have a nice long flowing skirt. Here you go, Chloe. Nice breakfast, courtesy of Evelyn. What do you got for me? 45 copper ores. We'll do it eventually, Clint. We did fill one of those quests at some point in our lives, but hopefully that's enough to sate him for however many years to come. I like that one. It looks like when you're holding an item now, you're holding it on a platter. I've always thought that, too, with this stinking garbage can hat. It just looks like we're serving it up to at some kind of fancy country club restaurant. Although, realistically, it would probably be more like just a... Not a country club restaurant, but a country restaurant. Some kind of redneck hoedown place where you ser you get served your food on a literal trash can lid. <laughs> it can be kind of novel. We got confirmation that Blade does indeed want to be here when the cactus fruit shows up. I wouldn't expect anything else, but it, he he shows up often enough that it makes it hard to discern when it's whether it's actually for a purpose or not. Also, if it happens that the date for the cactus fruit lines up with uh with one of these earlier streams, he might just not end up being here because it ends up being like 6 a.m. in New Zealand. So. But I don't know. I don't know how dedicated he is to being here for that moment. He might set an alarm for, for the stream if he knows that it is due. We will we will find out in the future at some point. Whether that's t today, tomorrow, or a thousand years from now. Like it's not a thousand, more like uh, 87 years from now. Go to the mines. I will drop off all these mine resources. Might as well also bring back some of this other stuff. That's good. If Blade isn't here, then no fruit. I mean, it would be the it would be the ultimate uh, mind troll to not be here when the cactus fruit shows up and like know it. I mean, probably what's, what, what will realistically happen is that when the cactus fruit is going to show up, Blade will be here, but he'll be lurking until the cactus fruit comes, and then he'll be he'll make he'll pretend like he just showed up at the perfect time, like the wizard that he is, or maybe he'll just actually show up at the perfect time. I'm open to many different interpretations of how this future is going to go. I don't know which one is right or which one I prefer. All I know is that we're slowly but surely, minute by minute, second by second, working our way towards it. By the way, it is nearing the end of the stream. I hope you've all enjoyed your time with uh, Alone with Relaxing Tea. You know we gotta do it. You didn't think this would be a permanent change, did you? Oh yeah. Now we are talking. Now we actually have the power to get the cactus fruit again. We disabled the cactus fruit by changing our music, and now it's re-enabled. We've toggled the switch back to true. Just take a moment to enjoy it. 
Ding, 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 ding. All right, let's go. Excuse me. Oh, I thought I thought the music wasn't going to start for a second, but then it it started just a a little later than I had anticipated. I love I love the this, there's a bunch of people who are like yes and then no and then why in chat. Oh man. I've never seen a song more polarizing than Pickle Jar Freaking Rag. I don't know the, whether that has to do with its ties to Haley or whether it's just because of the song itself. <laughs> it does have a unique melody to it, for sure. I don't know if anyone would call it their favorite song in Stardew Valley, except maybe me. But even then, I know there's songs that I prefer over Pickle Jar Rag. I just play it for the meme potential. Gotta do at least two more days of trash runs. I mean, we got at least two more days left in us here for sure because it's, uh, we got, what, 15 minutes left in the stream? That's more than enough time for two days. Probably even more than that, maybe like three or four days. Change the music back and I'll give you a cactus fruit. Gail, why would I trust you? You're always out here spamming cheese emojis when we're trying to go for our egg at the Feast of the Winter Star. Don't think I don't see you. You have labeled yourself as as an, an, an enemy of the grind, of the cactus fruit grind, and of the egg grind. And it's not a stance to be taken lightly. You're on the list, pal. Night Market has the best music? I could probably co-sign on that one. Night Market does have really good music. I'm somewhat partial to the volcano music from Ginger Island. The different volcano mines tracks, just because I hear, I've never heard them like organically before in the game, because I've never been there. And anytime I do hear them, it's just like a kind of novel experience. I, and I think they're just like really good music too. Egg season, exactly. The one thing that nobody can predict, or one of the few things that nobody can predict, whether or, whether or not we'll get the egg this season. That we'll find out uh, tomorrow, probably. Probus's birthday? Absolutely, Zipporah. I was just testing you to make sure that you remembered. I didn't, I, I didn't forget, I promise. And congratulations, you passed. All right. Head on home. I will run and grab ourselves a golden pumpkin. I just wanted to make it... I didn't want to, like, randomly go to Krobus's place and give him his birthday gift while we were in the middle of a garbage run. I feel like that would just be disrespectful to Krobus. We want to make a specific trip designated for Krobus and only Krobus. So let's, let's make him feel special today. Let's do it. He needs to know what Krobus means. Nobody knows what Krobus means in, in his own native language. It's a mystery that even the greatest of Stardew Valley scholars have not been able to uncover yet. Maybe one day he'll let us know, but today is probably not that day. I did remember your birthday, me and me alone, Krobus. I didn't have anyone remind me about it. Frick. Oh man. You didn't see that? You didn't see that, chat. His, his name still has no meaning as far as we know. As far as we know. Redacted, redacted, scrub the VOD. No one can know what that Krobus means bridge crosser in his language. Oh frick, I just said it. Just made it to Prairie King World 2 for the first time. I partly blame watching you. That sounds like a positive influence if I've ever had one. Congratulations, Roysu. World 2 is where things start to get really, really tough. So, with those, with those fast little mushroom guys that take multiple hits if you don't have the damage upgrade. I, I salute to you. Best of luck. Alright, I'm off to bed here. Just me and my four owl buddies. 
Probus means buddy. Well, hello there, buddy. Probus means redacted in my language. He's like an SCP. I've thought about making an SCP before, because I think that's one of those things where it's a project that just anyone can submit to, but obviously it's not everyone's submission is going to get approved. You gotta follow certain guidelines when you're writing an SCP article, but I have had like an inkling to do that, because I like horror and I like writing. It kind of seems like a good fit. We'll see. Maybe some point in the future. I'll just sneak an SCP in there. You should arrange the stone owls like they're bodyguards. <laughs> that could be kind of funny. Can I get a mod to put sunglasses on the stone owls, turn them all into bouncers? That would be honestly, like, pretty hilarious. Something about an owl with sunglasses really makes me smile. There's, like, any owl imagining it with sunglasses. Maybe it's the fact that they have such big eyes, so they need, like, really big sunglasses to cover their eyes. And then they, I just imagine them doing that thing where they, like, bob their head in circles like owls do sometimes in those meme gifts. But with the sunglasses on, it's... It's, it's peak memory. It really is. One of those things could be, like, the, the mascot for the entire internet. Of course I kid. We all know that the mascot for the internet would have to be a cat of some kind. You save all the Iridium Horseradish for quick and easy gifting. Unfortunately, we have no access to Iridium Horseradish because we don't have the botanist profession. I think that's the only way you can go about getting one of those. Have a good one there, Reduke. Uh, I thought I thought I said Redo Cookie, but it's just Red Cookie. I put I snuck an O in there for some reason. Thank you for tuning in. I can't imagine you're gonna miss the cactus fruit because we only have a few more uh, minutes left in the stream. Ten minutes or so. Mascot for the internet is Waluigi. You're probably not far off with that one, actually. What about a cat dressed as Waluigi, though? Now we're talking. You want fun? Wario will show you fun. Let's head off to the quarry real quick and uh, take care of business here. We're getting more than 150 jades per quarry run, which is kind of a lot. <laughs> I think it's a lot, a lot. If I get the cactus fruit, how much longer is the stream? I mean, I don't know. I have thought about doing that, of like, uh, if I manage to find a good time for it, where I have some good days off from my other job. If I could do a stream where it's like, streaming until we get the cactus fruit. But, who knows how long that stream would be liable to be. <laughs> it's something I'd have to consult with Blade, where it's like, hey, would I die if I tried to do this stream? Don't tell me when the cactus fruit's co coming, but would it be a plausible thing to do? <laughs> don't, don't, don't give away any information in chat there, Blade. We don't, we don't want to know whether we're close or not, close or not yet, but. I have thought about it. I've considered it before. Subathon. Argon just gets quiet after six hours. I'd have to take many intermittent breaks for sure in order to drink water and eat and that sort of thing. Relieve my throat. But if I had enough time to set aside for it, I think I could probably pull it out. Missed the question? Don't worry about it. You don't need to you don't need to concern yourself. I was I was entertaining the idea of eventually doing a stream where I just stream until I get the cactus fruit and just see how long that takes, but Knowing the odds are so far against us, it's probably not that wise. Uh, go to sleep for the night? Yeah. Yeah. Just leave the stream running while you're at work. 
Just leave it leave it in the house here so that you just hear Pickle Jar Rag on loop forever for like eight hours straight. There's one idea. Yeah, minimum spending perfection challenge, exactly. A little bream. Why do I feel like I need a bream for something? I think I needed it for cooking at some point, but we already took care of business there, so we can just sell that. There we go. For some reason I thought this was a supply crate up here, but it's just more seeds. Exclamation point, more seeds. Not really, but you know. It's on brand. Sonic Origins? I've never played a Sonic game in my life. That's not true. I did play Sonic Colors for a little bit. Never beat it, but I do own it. And that was a fun time. I don't know. Something about the Sonic games, especially like the old school ones, I just never really got into the gameplay style of... Board, could someone bring me a bream? What fortuitous timing, Abigail? <laughs> I just shipped one. Maybe you can go buy it on uh, on Shebay. Haley says it's gross when all the fallen leaves get slimy. You're about a season late, girl. But you know what? I can appreciate the sentiment all the same. Don't think we need any more coral. What's she gonna do with that bream? She just said she was bored. I don't know. Maybe she's just gonna like dissect it or something. Abigail's kind of quirky like that. You just walk into her room like an hour after giving her the bream. She's covered in fish blood and guts. Hey, a diamond. It's kind of rare. Haven't we got- we've gotten like three diamonds from garbage cans so far, but no cactus fruit? Game is rigged, dude. You could get it back from the bin. I could grab the bream back from the bin, but... It, let's teach Abigail a lesson. We can't just deliver her things on a- on a garbage platter at all times. Sometimes she has to put in the hours, put in the money, and buy the bream herself. So Abigail, she's welcome to it. She just needs to needs to play the game like the rest of us. There we go. And we got time for one more garbage collection day. And then a little prayer king to end things off. Let's freaking do it. Someone bought the bream. Who knows? Could be Abby. We'll just have to see if she's, uh... If she spends the whole day at home. And then comes at me with, like, a fish tooth necklace. Wait, fish don't have teeth, do they? Sharks have teeth. I'm thinking of shark tooth necklace. I got, I got the ideas con conflated in my head. You sometimes get fish bones stuck in your teeth if you don't, uh, if you don't fillet them correctly. <laughs> one more day on winter 4th of year 6? Absolutely, just for you, Blade. This one, this one's the Blade day? Let's do it. Some fish have teeth? That's probably true. I mean, there's so many different kinds of fish out there. Ooh, Arrowhead! Is this one of the things that we can make into a, uh, into the caveman outfit? We were talking about that last stream, where we were trying to complete our hair bone set. Is like, prehistoric axe and prehistoric tool. I don't think Arrowhead was one that was in the discussion, but I'm willing to tailor it and at least see. Blade, you keep saying wolf, and I don't know what it means. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm... I'm afraid of what the what the wolf do, be doing. Are you hungry like the wolf? Hungry for some cactus fruit? I have a blade command that just says wolf. 
I'm outside of the loop. I don't know what the wolf lore is. He's crying wolf. He's crying wolf. Oh my god. The joke explainer had to log on for that one because I'm just dumb. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. He's crying wolf. All right. Now let's all pretend that I never asked and we can all just be like, oh, so funny. Crying wolf. Hello, Pikachu Bob. Goodbye, Pikachu Bob. Thank you for tuning in. It is legitimately, like, funny now that I know it's it's happening. It's just I was, like, so confused. I thought I was, like, going crazy. I know there's, like, a wolf event in Stardew Valley where your animals get eaten by a wolf or something in the middle of the night. But I'm like, we don't have any animals, so what the heck is this guy on about? That's our last day for, for this stream. We gotta run to the quarry real quick, do our crystallarium thing. And then close out the stream as we always do. Blade Wolf, you say? The lesser known sequel to Blade Runner? Blade Runner, another movie that I have never seen, but have been told to probably watch sometime. Isn't there a whole show about Blade Runner now? They, they came out with a show pretty recently in the Blade Runner universe. That sounds familiar. You need a prehistoric axe or prehistoric tool, arrowhead won't work. Well, we'll give it a try anyway, just to see what the arrowhead even makes. It's rare that we get the opportunity. Like, arrowheads are not uh, that common of an item, so we might as well use it for something a little more interesting than just selling it. What are you going to watch for your birthday? 24-hour stream, let's go. I would indulge you if I could, Amber, but that's a little too much for me, unfortunately. I got other things I got to attend to today, and I got to, like, eat at some point. Which I could do on stream, I suppose, but I wouldn't want to... I wouldn't want, wouldn't want to put you through that arduous experience. Alright. Burning through a lot of cloth today. We've tailored quite a few items, but it's all for filling out our wardrobe here. I'm all for it. It will make a shirt, but what kind of shirt is the real question. It's a soft arrow shirt. A lovely color, or a soft colored shirt with an upward arrow pattern. See how we like it? It's kind of got that, like, at home in your pajamas all day vibe. It, look, it looks really cozy. I'm not even going to lie. We'll have to play Winter 5 Year 6 on next stream. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> it definitely has a cozy vibe to it, for sure. Hello, Just Fun David Gaming. You're here right in time for, uh, for a little Prairie King as we, as we wrap up. Let's freaking go. We've done a lot of Junimo Kart today. Prairie King, it's your time to shine. Let's rock. We made it super far on our first, uh, or on our run last time. But the curse of, of streamers is that anytime you're doing multiple runs of something like this, you never get a back-to-back -back good run. So I would not hold your breath for this one. I don't think we're going to make it to World 3. I'd love to be proven wrong. And I'll still give it my all here. Don't you worry about that. I, just, I say as I almost walk into an enemy. That was a little close for comfort, for sure. It's alright, though. It's all good. Maybe that's a sign that the fact that I didn't walk into that enemy face first, that uh, we actually have a shot here. Is it Destiny speaking to me? Hello, is this Destiny? No, I'm Argon. You must have the wrong number. Get me away from here. Alright, I will grab that, absolutely. And now farm up a little bit of extra money. I didn't need to go for that extra life, but I just feel like they're good luck sometimes. Like, maybe the more lives you have, the more likely you are to not need them. Which would be perfect for us. I was gonna say that I felt like we had a, a good start with our uh, with our gold on this level, 
But now looking over, I realize we only got four gold coins this level. That's not a, that's not a good start whatsoever. This is a this is a bad spot to be, and we need to get an extra eleven gold on this level, preferably, in order for this to be a viable run. Well, I mean, viable depends because we can always get the extra gold in the next two levels if we need to. But at least ten gold, and we're singing. A lot of extra lives that I just don't need. Just, like, flat out do not need, but they're giving me a sign. If they're going to keep giving to me, I'll keep collecting them. I think I see a super chat in my peripheral vision. Give me one second to finish this level, and then I will uh, have a look at that. If it is, thank you. If not, then I must be going crazy. All right, um, we'll, we'll run this one back. Because <laughs> I was I was getting a little distracted my, by my own ramblings. Preston Jacobs, thank you for the $10 super chat. Just says thanks for all the great content. And congrats on 50 streams. This is number 50. I always, like, forget that. I don't put as much stock in, like, significant numbers like that as I usually do. Or as I used to, I should say. But uh, it is it is a 50, the 50th stream. 50 Price of Perfection streams deep. And who knows how many to go. We could be, like, over halfway done with the series. We could be uh, not even close to, like, a quarter of the way done. It all depends on how the RNG gods want to favor us. At the very least, we get a rare double Prairie King feature today. We played a lot of Junimo card. It's only fitting that we play a decent amount of Prairie King, too. I didn't feel it, it. It did just didn't feel right that death. You know, sometimes you you have a death and it's like, oh, that was fair. I was like, I did I played my best, but just wasn't quite good enough. Wasn't quite up to standard. That one that we had was, I was not in the zone. Now we're getting in the zone. We're actually in the in the king zone. In the king ring. I need I was I was gonna say like bone zone, but then it was like that doesn't make any sense. So. But since when have we cared about making sense, right? What fun is there in making sense? Ooh, that's a good one. That's a <laughs> bullet hell boss time? Let's go. Off to a better start as far as gold, at least, in this uh, run. So maybe it was a blessing in disguise. All right. I feel like I was gonna say something. I don't know what now. Story of my life, basically. What was I gonna say? It was probably something inane and unimportant. Just some rambling about uh, a video game that I played back in the early 2000s or something. That no one's ever heard of before. You know what I have been thinking about a lot lately is, uh... I want to get a real Mew. Like a, like a legit Mew in one of my Pokemon games. But the only way I know to do that... Without going to, like, events or something, and I don't think there's any events that are available right now for a Mew... Would be to... Play through my Pokemon Ranch on the Wii. The WiiWare game. And... You have to, like, deposit, like, a thousand different Pokemon from... Generation 4 games, and then you can unlock a Mew that way. And I do own that game, because I know you can't buy it anymore, but I own it anyway, so... I've thought about, like, going back and doing that, because that's, that's that kind of inane, uh... repetitious activity that's kind of my bread and butter, right? It falls right in line with the sort of stuff that I do on the Price of Perfection on a daily basis. We got nine coins, are you freaking kidding me? That was such a, such a poor level. All right, I guess we're going without any power-ups this time, any upgrades. Once the cactus fruit drops, there will be a handful of sweaty streams with the volcano and skull caverns. Absolutely. 100%. It's going to be such a breath of fresh air, too. We're all going to be like, oh my god, there's more to the game than searching garbage cans and, and, and all this random stuff. We're actually going to uh, we're gonna have some real progress, and it's going to be a beautiful thing. I 
I, I am concerned, though, that we're going to have to spend a lot of time on Ginger Island. So much so that it's probably going to be multiple streams worth, right? Which means that we're not going to have access to Journey of the Prairie King to end off the streams, unless we commit one of our inventory slots when we go to Ginger Island to bringing the uh, arcade system with us. That was, I mean, I should have used my power-up. I don't know why I wasn't. I was just afraid, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see how the math works out and what items I have to bring to Ginger Island, but I will legitimately consider bringing one of our arcade systems there. Are the servers up for storage on that game on uh, my Pokemon Ranch? I, is it even like it's... I don't remember it being an online game. I thought it was just, uh... Like, you literally store them on your Wii and you can watch them do weird, like, totem pole dances and stuff. It's a strange game. I'm going to sleep for the night. Seeing Argon refuse to use his power-up is so painful. I really should have, but I was just so lost in my own discussion. Either way. Another day, another stream. We will be live again tomorrow, same time, same place, for the last stream of the week. Where we will inevitably get the cactus fruit. You heard it here first. Not, not that I've ever promised that before. I digress. Oh my goodness. Have a great night, everybody. I hope you have enjoyed the stream. Have a great night, day, wherever you may be, whatever you're doing. Thank you for joining me. If you did enjoy the stream, please leave a like down below. It greatly helps out the channel. And subscribe if you want to see more. That will be notified when we go uh, live next. Also, exclamation point Discord if you want to join there. That's a good way to get uh, alerts for videos and streams as well. And it's just a fun time there in general. I'm going to hop out of here. I will see you tomorrow. Send you off with the usual fan art compilation. But until next time, this is Argon Matrix signing out. Thank you. And let's get my windows sorted out here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Good night. Bye.